this is true, then our country is in a lot of trouble. We would have these trips, these special trips. But he said, my, my daddy takes the bodies to the grocery store and he grinds them up and puts it in the hamburger. And nobody ever knows it. How can kids six, eight, ten years old be describing rituals that come from a book like the, like the Book of the Dead? It's hard to get your mind around people being capable of this kind of evil. This is Dan Bedondi of TruthRadioShow.com. I am honored to offer my listeners a one-month free subscription to NYSTV.org. Subscribers will have access to thousands of NYC TV videos from spiritual warfare to biblical and occultic topics, banned from YouTube videos, and much more. Subscribe today on nystv.org and use the promo code DANTHEMAN and receive your first month free. And welcome everybody to Spiritual Warfare Wednesday. We are live. It is uh, 8 p.m. Eastern here on the East Coast. So we're going to talk about prophecy in the news, revelation upon us. So, uh, yeah, like Brian always says, you can't make this stuff up. Wait till you see the news we're going to talk about. we got so much stuff going on here. And, uh, man, I tell you, uh, we've got John Pound is coming on this week uh, the, on Friday. So, uh, yeah, awesome stuff, man. We've got David Carrico coming on. And so... Anyway, welcome to Spiritual Warfare Wednesday, and it's Prophecy in the News, and uh, it's going to be an awesome show here. So I want to thank ShakingWakeRadio.com and BeforeIt'sNews.com for carrying the show and the awesome, amazing networks. And uh, also, guys, uh, the show tonight is brought to you by WatsLeather.com. Please check them out, WatsLeather.com. 
And so, guys, um, coming up Friday is Satan's New World Order in Spiritual Wickedness. This is going to be a hard-hitting show. Uh, Me, Brian, and John Pounders, we're going to triple-team this show uh, coming up Friday at 11 p.m. Eastern. Normally, yeah, we start at 10, but um, because I I got obligations uh, uh, Friday night, so... I'll be on, uh, we'll be, you know, starting 11 p.m. Eastern, which will be live. So, yeah, before you get going, guys, I just want to read off this verse because it's going to play a very significance to what we're going to talk about tonight. So, 1 Thessalonians 5.3 says, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction is coming upon them as a travel of a, upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So, and as you can see, that's the picture of the global elite. And that's all the world's power right there in that one disgusting, vile building called the United Nations. I think that's the General Assembly room, whatever. But utterly disgusting. You know, and it really is. And uh, yeah, pure filth and everything else. And we're going to get into that. And uh, this is going to tie also into the show Friday. So this show here is just like a build up, a little taste of what you're going to see Friday. Um, we're going to have John Pound design. We're going to get like a lot into Elon Musk, a lot about his pushing of these microchips and everything else. Could that be the mark of the beast? We don't know. We'll check that out. You know what I mean? But we got so much stuff to talk about. We're going to skip through some news and uh, just talk about what's going on in the news. What's, because here's the thing with the Bible, right? No other doctrine in the world, no other religion, you know, which we don't follow religion. No doctrine in the world could do this, right? See the scripture right here, the Bible, right? You... You want to know how it's true? You can open up a newspaper, read the news, and see what's going on in the world, world events, and it happens to match us, 110%. You know, no errors, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So that being said, so anyway, Brian, thank you for joining us again. Uh, awesome co-host, Brian Reese. So what's up, Brian? How much, Dan. I'm glad to be here. It's going to be a really cool show, just talking about yeah. random news. and oh, Well, it's not random. Like I, like you said a minute ago, when I always say you just can't make this stuff up, there's some crazy stuff popping off. So yeah. I'm looking forward to talking about all this stuff. So it's going to be a really cool, jammed, packed Spiritual Warfare Wednesday. So yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's pretty cool. And uh, we just thought, yeah, I think it was yesterday, we just like, right, let's do a Spiritual Warfare Wednesday because it's not permanent. I mean, we just do it here and there, but I think it's starting to become permanent, man, because that's <laughs> what we're talking about, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a we call it runoffs. Basically, uh, if we have a show on a Friday night, like usual, right, and we'll have more information that we couldn't bring up because of the time, and like you know, let's um, let's bring it home on Wednesday. You know what I mean? Or you know, like this show here is a build up for Friday. You know what I mean? So uh, it's awesome stuff, and uh, I think uh, when Spiritual Warfare Wednesday is going to be start, becoming permanent. You know, and um, you know, a lot of people asking me how come you don't do your new show no more. Well, I'm going to start the news again. I'm going to probably going to do the Monday night news. And um, if we don't do a special warfare Wednesday, uh, then I'll do it on Wednesday as well. Uh, because here's the thing, right? And I, it took me all these years to realize this, right? With the news, right? It's the same stuff regurgitating for weeks on end. You know what I mean? Little bit, little bit of changes and whatever. But if you deliver one hard show once a week that would deliver what's going on, you know, the, right now the whole world's talking about Twitter. You know what I mean? When in the world... You know, the whole world revolved around a social media company. Mm. You know, it's crazy, man. It really is. And, uh, but, you know, unfortunately, we have to cover the news. And that's what people understand, too, because a lot of people say, well, just leave the news alone, cover this stuff. But the thing is, guys, you got to understand, you, can't know pro- you, you cannot know prophecy unless you know politics, unless you know what's going on in the world, because them two match hand in hand. You know what I mean? Politics and religion go hand in hand. Because if you don't, I mean, if you don't know, don't know one, you don't know the other. You know what I mean? Uh, you have to mix the two. You know what I mean? Because it is politics that bring forth the antichrist. Politics that bring forth the the um, the false prophet. Politics that brings forth their new world order. You know what I mean? It's political power that do this, controlled by spiritual wickedness in high places. You know what I mean? So anyway, yeah. So Brian, I'm done rambling here. So no, you're good, Dan. Like uh, amped up today. <laughs> yeah. Um. Man, I mean, where, where do you want to start at? It's just so much. I mean, yeah. we could talk about the what was those poor people in North Carolina, you know, with the mm. those power stations getting, you know, obliterated. You know, what's up with that, Dan? FBI involvement, you know, all that. Yeah, of course the FBI is involved in the let me get that up, uh, Carolina. Yeah, it's interesting because um, when you look at it really deep. I'm pretty sure whenever I, whenever I seen that, I said, man, are you kidding me? Cause you know, I was like, come on now. And I don't know if everybody, I brought this up before I brought it up in some other platforms and on spiritual warfare Friday, you know, 
you know, they just talk about it today on ABC News, uh, power being restored in North Carolina County affected by shooting. Mm. Mm. So I thought about that. And then when I, when I, you do a little research on it and it says Duke Energy, uh, Duke like Energy's. They're, uh, they're blaming uh, terrorist attacks for this? Is yeah. That's what, that's what they're, I think that's what the narrative is. Yeah. Yeah. And they're reporting WAE. WRAL, I'm sorry, reward for up to $75,000 for information leading to the arrest of those responsible for the power grid attack. And the, the country is warned about terror attacks which could target U.S. infrastructure in certain groups days before the shooting that knocked out Morris County's power grid, leaving tens of thousands without heat or electricity. You know what I mean? I don't, I, <laughs> yeah, and uh, the way well, I may before I say that, the FBI on Wednesday released a post to urging people to come forward with information about the target attacks on two power substations Saturday night that left 45,000 people in the dock for cold. Here's the thing, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it right now. Uh, if anybody thinks that terrorists are going to just go to North Carolina, mm-hmm. what, what's the what's the motive? What's the purpose? That's mm-hmm. not going to do them any good. Well, because well, they knock people's power out. What is that going to do? Mm-hmm. I smell FBI all over this, and uh, this is a false flag. That's mm-hmm. exactly what I'm going to call it right here. Yeah, I mean, and because here's the thing, yeah. They were announcing that yes, they were. They were announcing that you know, you know, Biden was like, oh, they could target an infrastructure. Of course, they're gonna they'll blame Russia or some kind of a terrorist group, whatever the case. But what's the point? What would Putin's, you know, what would it serve Putin to say? All right, I'm, I'm gonna pick North Carolina and knock their power out. What in the world would that even suit them for? You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, uh, this smells like an FBI false flag. Well. I want to point this out too, Dan. It uh, talks about Duke Energy, right? Yeah. So Duke Energy is the same. I don't know if a lot of people, a lot of our listeners, if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of places in the in the United States that are have these purple lights. The you know the out you know just the night lights. The you know they're all over the interstate and everything, exits and stuff. It's just literally lights that are turning purple, and they say it's just a defect. And I've looked into that company i'm not trying to bash them but there is a microsoft a lot of other companies that are tied to duke energy yep. i'm just letting i thought it was interesting i mean obviously yeah it's not a coincidence that duke energy is on here reporting on this i get it but uh there's something to it i mean there has to be and uh, i just thought i'd point that out i don't know if i you know just want to chime in you know say say i think there's some kind of there is something to it i don't know what do you think dan because it just seems weird to me I mean, yeah. they don't like those lights. They're purple, right? They look like literally a blue lamp, like a blue light. And yeah. they're kind of, they're, they're a nuisance, right? So, um, and they said they're defective, but they keep popping up everywhere. You can't have a bunch of defected lights. Mm-hmm. You know, I just think it's interesting that they're really talking about Duke Energy. I'm not, and I'm not bashing Duke Energy. It's nothing to do with that. I'm just saying in general, it's kind of ironic, but. Um, That's what they look that, like there. Yeah. Those, those blue lights, they. See, here's what cracked me up. It, it city by city, it was like, uh, you know, they you would thought the light poles or the lights would be uh, so called, you know, to do with taxes or you know your local government or local cities would take care of, but it's not that. It's not that. Like they're they're well contracted out, and it's they're not, they don't have control over it. I thought it was weird, and it all ties back to Duke Energy, and they. You know, they spilled on a bunch of news outlets saying that they was just affected. And but I caught, I thought it was kind of a wild narrative. Yeah, this why would you cut? Wh- why would you keep putting? Why would you keep putting up defective lights? Yeah, and, this <laughs> and, and it's not in contr- North Carolina, right here. Yeah, there you go. And uh, what was that? What was that? Uh, what was the exact place? Was it called Cart? What was that? Cut the the county in North Carolina that got hit by that? Wasn't it? Uh, Car- it starts with the C. My brain is. Uh, turning off here up for it's it'll have to come back to me in a minute but whatever that county is that got hit is it moore county i think it's moore county maybe but it was a small town but anyways if you type it in dan i could bring it up on on for the show but if you want me to but i noticed something really bizarre about this town and the proximity of where it was at and did you know that not too far from this, from that town that, uh, there it is. Was it called cart? <laughs> Excuse me. Cartage, Cartage County, Cartage city. The one that has the electricity out. Um, 
not too far in all circumference of the of that county in that little city there is literally four different military bases of some shape or form mm. and i mean i could show it up on google earth but if you want me to i don't know if you want to show it i thought it was kind of interesting but yeah. there is there is four uh facilities that are not too far about 20 th- some of them north 30 carolina? miles away yeah north carolina yeah oh, that's the wrong one <laughs> i'm sorry yeah forgive me but uh i've got you all i've got you off your off there but uh but me of me just blabbered on here but i could show it um i just thought it was interesting that there was four different military bases pr- close proximity within a 20 to 30 mile radius from that uh from all this carnage that happened to those power stations. I'm just throwing it out there. You yeah. know, just a what if. What if kind of narrative, you know? And when, is it something when the FBI is all over something, that's what I learned about doing news reporting over all these years and uh, investigating things like that and going out to places. And every time the FBI is involved, every time they're the ones calling the shots, it's 99% of the time is they had some prior knowledge to it or they let it happen or they orchestrated it themselves. So mm-hmm. and I'm smelling a big false flag there, man, and uh, all over the place. Because why? You know, I mean, why? What would it again? Uh, what would it benefit any terrorists to do this? Let's just mm-hmm. pick North Carolina. We're gonna knock out forty-five thousand people. And uh, the other thing could be too is the negligence of the power company, like uh, like you said, Duke Energy here. They report mm-hmm. on Wednesday morning that all substation equipment damage from the vandalism has been fully repaired. So it could be the negligence of Duke Energy and they're blaming terrorists. It could be a number of things, guys. But yeah, and the FBI seeking information. The shooting. I thought it was interesting. Station. Yeah, I thought it was interesting too. They they were saying they didn't know how long it was going to take to come back on. Yeah. You know when it first happened. You know, and I was like, wow, this could be weeks. But they literally, thank God. It seems like that they're having power stored. So thank God, because, you know, kids, elderly women, you know, and men, <laughs> everybody that can't defend themselves and all that. And, and then if they barely have enough to keep their electricity on as it is, you know, there might not be a lot of people that have warm, warm clothes. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, that was kind of heartbreaking to know there's people, you know, that type of situation for just ne- negligent. They're, this is just insane um, on the part is somebody went around and done that but somebody had to know exactly what they was doing you know what i mean yeah. like to to hit those certain i think they hit strategic strategic areas on the power station i think it was kind of interesting how that all uh come into play but uh one thing i wanted to bring out too damn this is a theory of mine throw it out here to the broadcast isn't it all isn't it ironic that you know like even back two years ago they was telling people not to go inside or stay inside for certain reasons. And at nighttime, don't go out between 10 and five. And then, you know, you hear about these rolling blackouts, all these different electrical malfunctionings. We got, you got internet issues, all these different communication problems, cell phones issues here lately and all this stuff. And I just thought it was interesting. Here's my theory, Dan. Wouldn't it be so, wouldn't it be so easy just to, just to shut down power over top of a, you know, major area. Mm-hmm. While while they fly something over, I'm just saying, you know, there wouldn't be nobody with, you know, majority of people would be like in a panic. Their cell phones are not charged. You know, they can't video. You know, the majority of the population would be just closed off, and then they fly stuff over. I'm just throwing something out, you know, because there's all this UFO stuff going on, and it, it just it just kind of dawned. I just the first thing I thought of, I was like, oh, I wonder why they would do that, you know. And then it's just weird that they got the power back on that quick. With that type of damage, you know, with those type of type of weaponry that that tore those power stations down, so they done a heck of a something happened to do be able to get that all fixed. You know, I mean, they must have sent a fleet of people down there. You know, so I just yeah. want to throw it out there. It's crazy, man. So I guess I'm having problems with my. I just turned it up, so hopefully you can hear me now. So let me know, guys, if you can hear me now in the chat room. And I don't know what's going on. It's, it's not the microphone. It's a brand new microphone. It's uh, something to do with the uh, OBS or Pro. I don't know what it is, but I cranked it up. So <laughs> so hopefully everybody can hear me. So I apologize about that. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I owe, It's crazy. And then the reason why, you know, the feds would do this, this is the reason why they would do this, because they want to keep you in fear 
And you know the thing is they they have FEMA orders right to shut down power and all that basically during you know crisis right that FEMA they have no uh, FEMA has uh, executive orders they call them FEMA executive orders to be able to shut power grids down and control things you know what I mean shut supermarkets mm-hmm. down and everything else so uh, yeah no <laughs> that could be the case too I mean there, there's a lot of reasons why the government would do this more than the terrorist group. Again, I can see if the sorry it's terrorist world. Let's shut down Manhattan. Let's shut down the Big Apple. You know what I mean? Let's shut down Los Angeles, California. That would benefit the terrorists. You know what I mean? But shutting down just a random place in North Carolina by shooting a little, uh, it could be anything. It could be people messing around, or it could be the yeah. FBI doing this thing. We we don't know. You know what I mean? And uh, but the thing is, this would this is just to put fear into people. Oh, we told you, yeah, the, um, there's going to be terrorists shutting things down. And I don't think a terrorist is going to go around shooting um, <laughs> uh, Transformers. Uh, I think they'll do it, do it in, you know, hacking it, whatever the case, but we don't know. You know what I mean? So it's the thing I wanted to bring up too here in the news, uh, you know, talk about spiritual and everything else, guys. Uh, so this is uh, weird. So Cambridge Dean, or the dean was like the principal, but the dean of the Cambridge University, defends sermon about Jesus being in the trans body, and sorry for the language, but vaginal side wound blasted as heresy. So the sermon likened wound in Jesus. Remember that you know, he was stabbed in the side, pierced in the side with the um, the dagger, uh, the, whatever it was. So Jesus is, uh, it says, side to a, v- a vagina that congregates uncomfortable and then tears. So this was on Tucker Carlson talking about this, and there was a dean of uh, University of Cambridge in the UK. So came to the defense of junior research fellow whose sermon last Sunday about Jesus Christ having a trans body reported left outraged congregants in tears. So you see the major attack. I mean, it, this is disgusting, man. And mm-hmm. it's like in Christ's simultaneously masculine and feminine body in these works. And the body of Christ in these works suggests that the body of all bodies, then his body is also the trans body, he said. So this guy, Heath, uh, who's a doctorate in theology, he's got a degree in theology, I don't know how, but was supervised by former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, who also claimed that in one of the medieval paintings he displays the, to the congregation, the spear wound in Jesus' side takes on a uh, Decidedly vag- vaginal appearance, and another he pointed out how the blood from his uh, side flows to his groin. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a de- uh, archbishop here, yeah, a former archbishop. I guess that's why he's a former now, <laughs> or whatever the case. But man, uh, that's disgusting. You know what I mean? And that's the picture right there. Yeah, you know I mean? so they're gonna base this off for somebody's art. Hmm. But again, this is like just attack on you know a savior. That's what it is. Amen. And, man. Yeah, we just did a show too. Uh, it was the last week of the week before. I keep forgetting. But um, you know, debunking that Jesus and Lucifer are the same person. You know what I mean? And um, we put that to rest big time. Uh, me, you, and Trey boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just um, it just blows my mind that they won't. Mm-hmm. They don't do this to anybody else, like any other you know so called deity. Yeah, you know what I mean. They don't do it to anything else. Oh, there's a picture right there. It blows my mind that they do this disgusting stuff, you know, and you know to make an image of uh, first off, draw an image of Jesus, and then such blasphemy statements, you know what I mean, and making all this uh, perverse uh, filth that goes along with it. It's yep. depressing. It's disgusting and depressing, and um, it just blows my mind. You know, you, you know, I'm not trying to bring this up but you know they they throw up baphomet pictures and baphomet stuff everywhere but they don't never you know deface that you know <laughs> yeah so they they add and grow to it you know what i mean they you know so it's it's you know they don't it's it's really heartbreaking really and of course it's from the lgbtq activists you know what i mean it was a sermon to to please them so i don't know how you get a vagina in that picture yeah i know you guys can see this here but I don't even want to zoom up, but well, that's just a wound right there. But still, this is a Second Commandment violation, just to even make this in the first place. But, you know, yeah, the Catholic Church, they like to, you know, <laughs> they like to, you know, they don't have a Second Commandment. They don't have an idolatry commandment in their version. But, yeah, this is sickening. Yeah, I mean, and then, then say, oh, it's a, it's a vagina. And, uh, you know, what does that sound like to you, uh, teaching about an androgynous God? Doesn't that sound like a little about Kabbalism, ca- Kabbalism there? Yeah, it's just it's just hard to even look at it, you know. 
It really is. Yeah. And that's kind of where we're at, Dan. Yep. I mean, we're at, you know, so much deception on all fronts. Sick, you know, sick and perverse. Hmm. Mani- you know, it's bending and twisting of things. And it's, it's, it's a crazy realm that we live in. Crazy world, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, hmm. Oh, it is. Probably we just got to pray. Keep praying, you know? It's just, Yeah. And a couple more things here. Then uh, Brian's got some stuff on uh, UFOs and it just uh, came out in the news. Uh, but um, Kirk Cameron, the star of um, those movies, Left Behind. And by the way, guys, those are just those are just good movies. That's all they are. It's um, based off the fictitious John Nelson Darby's pre-tribulation rapture and stuff. But good movies, absolutely. But it's all about that's about exactly what they are. But regardless, uh, Kirk Cameron is denying story hour slot in public libraries for his new book, faith-based book for kids. Right. So the actor right has gotten his not gotten a single yes from 50 public libraries his publisher has contacted so far messaging uh does not align he was told so basically um so he wants to read this to kids right 50 different libraries said no right but it's okay to have a transgender with the junk hanging out from the skirt uh read in front of the kids with the legs wide open and they're teaching kids that you could be a, a magic tooth fairy drag queen you know what i mean that's okay uh, that's widely accepted but this is, uh, you know, again, the prophecy in the news. This is, the Bible says that this stuff would happen, you know what I mean? And when you know, the disgusting stuff that's going on in the filth, you know what I mean? That's okay. If I want to go in the library to say I'm going to teach pedophilia, right? Oh, yeah, they're widely accepted because it's LGBTQ. But, yeah, you put anything faith-based, forget it, you know what I mean? It's horrible, mm. you know what I mean? It was exclusive mm. a new children's book out that celebrates family, faith, and biblical wisdom, actor, and writer Kirk Cameron cannot reach scores of American children or their families in many U.S. cities and public library system because over 50 public libraries have either outright rejected him or not responded to his request on his behalf. And as a story hour program for kids and parents connected to new book releases and activity that many libraries typically present to patrons and communities. But if he was out there teaching, like, all right, well, you know, you kids could, you know, cut your... Genitals off. Oh, yeah, the, the, he'd be in all 50 libraries. And I'm not even uh, exaggerating with that. That's disgusting. Mm. What are your thoughts on that, brother? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you see, uh, say, yeah, I mean, I'm still on the. <laughs> I'm still disgusted over the Jesus photo. Yeah. Earlier, you know, now we're, still, now we're taking this in. So um, it, it's just what really drives me insane. It's like. People eat this up. Mm. Even people that are so called, you know, if they, you know, whatever, if they say that they follow Jesus or whatever, they still eat this. They consume this debt, this devilish filth, and it's like it's it's ultimately programming at the end of the day. And they let their souls go when they start, you know, what's the word they. They ingest it, mm. they inhale it, and all this other stuff, and they consume it, and then they just slap a Jesus label on it and say, "Well, he'll forgive me." You know, I, mm. I still enjoy it though. I still watch, still like watching all this garbage. You know, and then yeah. and, you know, one day Ben, one day saying I'm against, the next day saying they're for it. You know, and it's just, it's just sad, man. I, this whole topic here, it's just, I, I just, it seems like everything's just upside down. Yeah, it is. You know, like the wind used to blow a different way, <laughs> but then, you know, you got these people, you got these other people out here that are talking about these spiritual new worlds and there's this, you know, this is a, um, alternate universal world and we're going through this, the great ascension phase. And that's why that, you know, you got some of these people saying that, you know, it's a new age movement of Christianity is what it is. They say, well, you know, this is why we're holding on to the the values of jesus and we have to wait on the ascension process and we're going to be transported miraculously to the new world Hmm. and that's why this world we went through an alternate dimension and this is why this all you know this is why they make up all kinds of stuff like you know we're sealed but we accidentally they will say this we accidentally got merged into this alternate reality which causes all this that's why when we look at everything it's just going into you know chaos <laughs> they're exce- you know so they really do they're, there's there's a big movement with that right now yeah and it's just insane um 
So that's what I'm saying. This is what we're talking about. They'll consume it, look at it, you know, say it's good, say it's bad, turn around and flip flop, you know, at the, at the drop of a dime and then turn around and spin a different narrative. And, you know, they're totally, totally getting away from the scriptures and, and the living word of God, mm-hmm. you know, like, and it's just, that's just where we're at. I mean, yeah. it's just, and then, and then if you believe, if you listen to people like that, before you know it, if you're not guarded your heart, you will, you will consume it. You will, it will consume you. You will under, you'll believe it and you'll mm-hmm. be dancing in the wrong, wrong camp. So yep. it's just, mm, it's crazy, Dan. And I don't know if, uh, is Candace Cameron his wife or something? I don't know if she's related. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I don't know. Well, it says Candace Cameron Burr is hitting back at uh, her haters after she found herself in hot water for defending traditional marriage. So, I guess uh, earlier this week, uh, we reported, they did here, Hollywood star Candace Cameron Burr, uh, Full House and Full House, uh, fame was uh, receiving backlash after saying that her new network, Great American Family, will be focused on stories that are about traditional marriage. And uh, Cameron Burr, who designed... Uh, sign, I'm sorry, is a ch- chief executive officer of Gaff Network earlier this year, is now fighting back her haters after she refused to back down. Good, don't back down to the cancel culture, you know. And here's the thing, too, that I hope some of these uh, blokes are listening. Those woke blokes, I call them. You're a bunch of jokes, okay? Nobody's intimidated by you, and uh, we'll stand up against you, plain and simple. And any company that caves, once you go woke, you go broke. Plain and simple. So we've seen that over with Disney, everything else. When the thing is, when these cancer cultures went in the, the woke mafia, they attack um, Hobby Lobby, right? Hobby Lobby, <laughs> the stocks went through the roof, right? They attacked um, Chick Fil A, right? What happened? Chick Fil A. I mean, even where I live, you can't even get in line half the time because those cars are out to the street. You know what I mean? When you, these woke people attack something, okay, the people do the opposite. And the thing is, here's the thing: if you don't like, it, I don't care if he's a rainbow group, right? God makes the rules of marriage. He says, one man, one woman. You don't like it too damn bad. And I'll put, tell you right to your face, and I don't care about your little rainbow crap. You know what I mean? You try telling God that. Oh, it's my right to have same sex marriage. Yeah, go. Good luck with that. That's all I have to say. God makes the rules. You don't like it too damn bad. Take it up with him. And good luck, by the way. Good luck doing that. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? I dare you. Go, go talk to God and say, yo, I have a right to be gay and uh, go marry my brother. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll shut up because of YouTube, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Like me, if you, somebody's gay, right? This is, I have to say this all the time. If somebody's gay, it's none of my business, all right? And I don't judge people for it. And it's none of my business what you do behind your door. I don't want to know. Trust me, I do not want to know, right? And just like much as you don't like, want to know what me and my wife do, you know what I mean? That should be private business, you know what I mean? But when you go out publicizing it, when you indoctrinate kids, this is where I get really ticked off, you know what I mean? Because it goes after the kids. You guys groom children. Don't say you don't because you do. You got these disgusting trash bag pedophiles who sit in libraries and men wearing skirts with no underwear with the junk hanging out purposely in front of kids You and come to find out these guys are sex offenders, right? Yeah, you gotta have some screws loose in your head. Then telling kids it's okay uh, if you want to marry your best Tommy, if you want to marry, marry your best friend Jim, go for it. No, the mm-hmm. Bible says no. Plain and simple. You don't like it too damn bad. I'm not backing down from you because the only person I have to face at the end of the day is my Heavenly Father, and I could give a rat's butt, okay, what you think or have to say. Plain and simple. And uh, even if they shut me down, I don't care. You know, we'll go on Rumble. I don't care. We'll find somewhere to broadcast. But, you know what I mean? We are not backing down. And good for uh, Candace Cameron. She needs to fire back and, like, literally, literally flip them the bread. Tell them, yeah, go, go straight to hell. Uh, and excuse the language, guys. But that's exactly what she should say because it's exactly where they're going. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. the, the, this stuff just boils my blood to no end. Again, if you what you do behind your closed doors, hey, none of my business. I don't want to hear it. All right, plain and simple. You know what I mean? That's your deal to deal with God. Okay, I'm not your judge, but don't rub it down our society because she wants to have a program with traditional marriage. You know what I mean? Too bad. It's disgusting. Every every channel you turn on now, you got two guys kissing, right? And they 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 got these drug commercials out there, right? And I don't want to get too much into that, but it shows two men have you know. Kissing, right? And a lot of these uh, diseases are related to these homosexual sex. Then it's all been admitted on the TV. And I mean, oh, it's safe to have sex with this drug or something like that. And uh, But it doesn't prevent AIDS. You know what I mean? This is where all these uh, diseases come from. Then they want to introduce this to kids. You know what I mean? Again, you know, it makes me, oh, man, it just like gets me boiling, man, I tell you. Sorry. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> mm, wow. Yeah, I mean, I, 
Yeah, those left behind films and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. they like you said before, they's good for entertainment, yeah. I guess. But now it's like, you know, it's a totally different uh you know, when you go back and even if you reference those movies with the rapture and all that stuff incorporated mm-hmm. in, and that's something we don't believe in, you know. And um but yeah, I mean I'm not gonna bash them or anything. I know that they're they're trying, you know, like you said, traditional values and stuff that they're trying to do for this show, but if there's a bunch of backlash, I pray that I pray that the evil will be, you know, subdued, you know, to keep it away. You know, hopefully they'll have a decent program, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, but yeah, I just, like I said earlier, they, you know, there's people trying to do good things and there's some people that are, and I'm just praying for everybody, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of filth and all every corner, you know, we're just, uh, pray for all parties, even though, mm-hmm. you know, you're supposed to pray for enemy, <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, just pray for all parties because it's all it's just getting out of hand. It's all just getting out of hand, and then uh, and it just you know Jesus would you know I think about this all the time. Jesus would not want us to be you know yeah we have to have righteous anger and you know being upset, but mm. you know but we have to pray like diligently pray every day because this stuff is just it seems like it's coming against us, coming against us, coming against us, you know, and then like you said, through commercials, media and everything, but there's a point where you just have to like, you know, yeah, if we had the opportunity to, you know, somehow change the media, you know I mean? If we owned a broadcast network of some shape or form that was, you know, a multi-million dollar, you know, thing. Yeah. It'd be nice to have some good material and good content on 24 seven, you know, but, uh, That's not the case of this world, but, uh, but yeah, Dan, I'm not kidding you, man, that, you know, they got, there's just all kinds of stuff going on, man. Like, and it, it just blows my mind that they're pushing the alien agenda. Remember I was telling you on the phone mm-hmm. the other day on broadcast, cause I don't watch live, live television of any shape or form. I, I will go back and reference articles and stuff like that, but I could not believe that that's what they push on all networks now. Like. UFOs, just the stuff that you got done talking about, because I don't want to bring it back up because of, you know, YouTube or whatever, but just the stuff you talked about and then pushing the alien agenda, it blows my mind, man. Like, I didn't realize it was that bad with the the news anchors pushing the alien agenda every time you turn around and uh, bring it up and just laugh about it, right? So they're, they're, they're getting your mind engaged and they're, they're tuning you in to that that so-called frequency of understanding. And, um, yeah, man, it's just, it's crazy. I I got, this is off a subject, Dan, off a subject. I got something to throw out at you. I'm going to take something. I'm going to take you somewhere. This is totally off the cuff. Uh, speaking of tuning and programming, I got to throw us out here. We won't talk touch base. We won't talk about it too long. Do you remember back in 1995 when, um, when they, no joke. I remember I was in school, and in 1995, they told everybody to uh, uh, tune in, even the teachers, the principals, and everybody. What happened in 1995 that, in blows my mind, that we watched, we we stopped what we was doing, our work and everything. And, I, you know, you get a lot of different testimonies and people talk about this. They still remember that day of 1995 with, with the um, uh, O.J. Simpson mm. and his little white Bronco. And he's driving like 20 miles an hour down the street. You know, that's what it looked like. And um, it blew my mind, man. Was that some type of like massive, massive tuning in to get ready for, you know, like, all we, I'm not going to say, I'm going to be real careful what I say, but to program. You kind of get what I mean? Yeah. What, what's your input on that? Because it was just so, they was enticed to watch, make us watch it. And I'll never forget that. I'm like, why are we watching this crap? Oh yeah, it was you know, like hours. I think right, they're just driving slow on the highway, and they had a yeah. mile of police behind them. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't understand it. Then they slowly, re- you know, pulled him into the driveway, and then there you go. You know, after the so-called high pursuit chase, you know, I just thought that was some kind of mind control narrative. Because if you look real quick, I, I won't get much into it, but if you look real quick, uh, 1995. If you go back and look at some, some books and stuff, they claim. The singularity, that's when the, the so-called AI started taking over in 1995. Singularity, all that stuff. No joke. And I thought it was interesting whenever I started contemplating the back of my head, I was thinking about just a memory mm. of 1995. I just thought I just thought I'd throw it out there since we was talking about programs and media and everything. I thought it was interesting. 
if yeah. there's anything to it. You know, just throwing it out there. No, right, yeah, but, it was. Uh, I remember that. That was like all over the news for all, <laughs> uh, weeks, and it was, it was kind of funny too because. As I, uh, I I was like my s- in second year of pro wrestling, right? And uh, I remember going to a show, and uh, we did like back uh, three shows in a row or something like that. Me and a guy, we driving a ring truck, right? We're, we're tied, right? So <laughs> going up the highway, right? We see this <laughs> bus pulled over the side of the highway. It said free OJ, right? So we pulled over. We wow. thought it was free orange juice. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But it was a bunch of protesters. We was like, where's the orange juice? And it's like, oh no, it's our free OJ, OJ Simpson. Like, oh. Okay. Oh my goodness, Dan. <laughs> You're kidding me, right? That's hilarious because yeah. I was literally, that's <laughs> funny. You know what? I'm not making this stuff up, guys. I wasn't even planning on this, but uh, Dan, I got I to gotta show this real quick. There was a news article that I looked at earlier. It was talking about OJ, like the orange juice. <laughs> and and it just reminded me you, got me, you got me cracking up, man. Yeah, uh, orange juice future limit up on global supply squeeze. Breakfast is about to get more expensive, y'all. Come on now, that's what the, <laughs> that's what the article is. Um, it's talking about a literally an, a, a shortage on orange juice and oranges, right? And talking about in the narrative of what it is, Dan. I'll just speak about it real quick. I won't show it, but it's talking about the hurricane uh, Ian's uh, devastation. Yes, I understand, but uh, that's what they're blaming it on. I'm just letting you know. They're just kind of random. I thought I was speaking of OJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Free OJ. I'm like, oh, free orange juice. <laughs> yeah, let's pull over. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that went on for weeks, man. And um, Yeah, yeah. Months, actually, for the court thing and everything else. And yeah, that was crazy, man. And uh, it, back then, man, it was like when something happened, it was like... Phew, it was in the news for weeks on end and sometimes months. Now today, it's like, all right, somebody got shot. You know, and, and unfortunately, a school got shot up. Yeah, the, uh, three days later, it's an old news, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably the next day sometime, but man, it's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. I just want to throw it out there. Yeah. I thought that was kind of going along with the con- <laughs> It's a little <laughs> off, but it reminds me of manipulation of media and stuff and, and you know, television. You know, What about this weird stuff, man? Uh, the Balasenka, I hope I pronounce, actually I don't care if I pronounce it right because they're a bunch of pedos. Uh, the Balasenka, a uh, designer on Demna, finally addresses uh, the BDSM ad scandal and apologizes. So, yeah. Uh, so after weeks of silence, uh, Balasenka's controversial creative director, Demna, has finally addressed the BDSM ad scandal torched online incorporating with children with bondage gear and a legend uh, for, of normalization of sexual fetishization fetishization of abuse of children so this is a Georgian fashion designer who goes only by the first name uh, posted a lengthy statement on uh, Instagram vowing to engage to engage with children and protective organizations but he says, I want to apologize for the wrong artistic choice of concept for the gifting campaign with the kids. I take my responsibility. It was uh, inappropriate to have kids promote objects that had nothing to do with them. The 41-year-old Ray. So this is a big, they make clothing, okay, all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah, sorry for the pictures, guys, but these are the pictures here, right? Posting pictures right now. This I don't know what. I, I I really don't know what BDSM is. I imagine something to do a bondage or whatever, some disgusting sex stuff, right? Uh, which I'm guessing because you can see the handcuffs and all the whips and all that stuff over there. But they're promoting the stuff with kids in the picture. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, sexual toys yeah. and everything with kids in the picture. And she's got a uh, teddy bear with the bondage stuff attached to it. Uh, dressed in it, I mean. And yeah, it's disgusting. It's depressing. So, yeah. It's depressing. Sick. Then of course the CEO they, they got major backlash. I mean, people were throwing away their uh uh the you know the clothes they have, the designer clothes from him. People were like burning and everything on a protest. So of course he comes out and then here's the thing too. Would he have apologized, right? Would have would, would he apologize if nobody said nothing? Yeah, you know I mean so of course he's gotta come out and apologize. So what kind of pervert is this guy? You know what I mean? This guy is a, a flamer. He really is. Some this is the, the jerk, yeah. He looks like a pedophile. You know what I mean? What, what kind of jerk would you do that for? You know what I mean? Like, it's your company, you design it, you got to let kids in the ads with sex toys. You know what I mean? The, the little teddy bear with the sex toy. Uh, whatever. It's disgusting, man. Look at that. Like, <laughs> horrible stuff, dude. You know what I mean? It really is. 
It's a yeah. balasenka, I think it's called. It's a, some famous design. A lot of Hollywood people wear the stuff. Yeah, go figure, right? <laughs> and I guess yeah, um, Kanye West came out to defend him, I guess. Wow. Well, words can't describe how I feel about this. That's all yeah. I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm just going to say that uh, really calmly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's um, it's irrita- It's just irritating. It's yeah, irritating. It is. That's, yeah, these people are discussing. Can... Yeah. I really pray for them, too. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of, you know, Kanye, um, I seen the other day, uh, Kanye, I think they was, uh, what is all the news about him getting kicked off Twitter and all that, right? Um, yeah, I think that, what was it, the uh, Kanye was kicked off of Twitter, uh, Dan, <laughs> for, uh, for posting a symbol of UFO uh, worship, like a cult, like worship cult. <laughs> I guess that's what they narrowed it. I think it was a uh, a uh, waskaga or something like that. Yeah, you know, like they. Uh, I think that's what they titled it as a symbol of UFO worship. You know, and and but I thought it was I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. So you know, I mean, you get into that whole narrative. You know, you can get you can talk about the shape of the you know the. Hit, you know Hitler narrative and the Denver airport and all that. And I thought it was interesting that they he was kicked off for the same signature, you know, the same symbol, you know. So, you know, saying it was associated with UFO. I just wanted to throw it out there, kind of wild. Yeah, <laughs> man, uh, it is. We got some uh, UFO news if you want to bring that up. Oh yeah, I mean I can chime in, man. I'm real. I'm just real like in a really calm state tonight, trying to be just in a good setup you know just good mindset tonight and i'm very thankful to be here so yeah um you know i mean a lot going on and just just thankful just thankful to be alive you know (laughs) so but uh let's get into it so i can share it and uh let's get into this narrative so well excuse me let me throw this up here real quick i'll get it right here all right one moment guys one no problem why are you doing that guys i want to thank valerie and uncle obvious uh for moderating our chat room thank you guys so much and there's a couple of people asking about donations whatever um we got this here with it's called a kofi it's basically um it's uh you can use any form of payment if anybody wants to donate to help support our ministry uh, i'm gonna pin it in the chat room too so uh, you, uh, you might have to cut and paste that link, or uh, you might be able to click on it. I don't know, but if you do that, it takes any form of card. I mean, it goes to our PayPal and everything, so you don't have to sign up for nothing. You just use your card, and it's all it's all safe, so you don't have to worry about nothing. We've been using it for a while now. It's uh, been very helpful, but it does go into our operation here. It helps uh, with equipment, streaming, and all the internet and everything else we have to pay for. And it's crazy that, um, especially with everything going up, electricity and all that stuff. So we thank everybody who has been helping uh, financially. And uh, the best thing you can do is help spiritually by praying for us. I say that all the time. Uh, but thank you guys, uh, Valerie and Uncle Obvious guys, for moderating this chat and everything else. And they've been sticking with us for a couple of years now. It's been pretty cool. So, yeah, whenever you're ready, brother. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to zoom in some more. I was trying to look at it. That's why I zoomed back in. Forgive me. <laughs> I wanted to zoom in. Look, you're going and done it now. Yeah, I was going back and showing my whole. I could see a triple. I could see my face and like a doppelganger and everything on here. Only on the Spiritual Warfare Wednesday show. Um, <laughs> on this article here, uh, U.S. nuclear submarine. So this is this came out today. Uh, um, excuse me, yesterday. Uh, buzzed by underwater object traveling faster than the speed of sound, according to the scientist. Uh, scientists carried out classified work on board the USS Hampton nuclear submarine in the late 1990s says a sub was buzzed was buzzed by an unidentified object traveling underwater faster than the speed of sound wow so in the water that's that's impressive (laughs) yeah i mean if you're if you got so much pressure water pressure and everything yeah dan it's it's off the chart right and you know i just get into this article like talking about this youtuber ufo researcher uh christopher alito uh, scientist Bob McGregor or McGuire said that the sub was running deep and fast when it was passed at extremely high speed by an object. According to Mick Griever, the uh, encounter was confirmed by a member of crew who was shocked at the speed that the unidentified submerged object. And, um, you know, there's a, just a, we, we were under, 
underway all of a sudden i like the um i hear the sound it's really strange because it's clear um that what is going on is some something is whizzing by us at a, and it's moving so fast i just can't believe it this thing blew us blew by us like we were standing still a person a knowledge of the onboard systems came out and said something really bad a bad word and uh, this, and I don't want to put that on there. I had to speed down and realize it said that. Then the speed of sound underwater, but the faster than the speed of sound in the air. He continued. Wow. And it talks about it's insane, right? Talks about this tic tag that they brought out in 2017. It kind of gives you this, you know, pilot describes encounter and all this stuff. Sounds moves, and it talks about uh, the crew didn't want to report it, didn't want to tell anybody, didn't want to cause any problems. Sounds moves at. 1,480 meters per second in water. That would be 3,355 miles per hour. Perhaps it was a TikTok UFO, which has been merging from the ocean at high rates of speed. You know, and then that's, then that's the end of that article. But uh, what do you think, Dan? I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy, man. Yeah. No, well, that it's is pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, we got this but, other uh, one, man. You know, the orbs and the triangle formation in the sky. Oh yeah, yeah. But we talk about that too. You go but ahead. But man, like, I'm just thinking about that. about that for a minute because, uh, <laughs> wow, to go the speed of sound on the water, that wow, we could only imagine how fast it would go in the air. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it has to be like Mach 20. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at that speed, right? And then they, um, well, it happened in the 1990s. What cracks me up about this, right? This is where I'm at. So if this happened in the 1990s, why are we talking about it now? And what, why why are we holding back information until, you know, 2022 and bring yeah. this article up and start talking about it now, right? It's like 30 it years. It just wasn't. Yeah, we're, we're literally trying to swing this knowledge out and just says, okay, all right, well, don't worry about it. We'll bring it out in December 2022, you know? Hmm. It kind of makes my mind wonder where what's going on here, especially what we talked about on, uh, on our Spiritual Warfare Friday, uh, this last show we did. I mean, come on, Dan. You know, that PDF file and everything, those documents of the UFO, I mean, UFO, FBI documents. I mean, come on. If you haven't got a chance, go check out that. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, I'm sorry. It just reminded me of, um, somebody made a meme. It was a Pope, right? And it said, it said PDF file, not pedophile. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of UFOs, man, um, or orbs in a triangle formation in the skies above Reno. This was actually on this year, look, yesterday, actually. So these are the orbs seen in uh, Nevada there, so let me play this video here. These three floating orbs were spotted in the sky above Reno in Nevada on December 5th, 2022. Witness oh, stated that they moved in unison with one another and were floating together. After three minutes, two of the lights disappeared in front of me, and then the third one followed about one minute later. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this UFO sighting, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more UFO videos. What the f fuck is that? Sorry for the language, guys. What is that? What the fuck is that? <laughs> oh hell! No! Dude, what the fuck is that? Let me turn the voice off. <laughs> So basically, people driving down, following these objects in the sky. Mm. <laughs> it's crazy, huh? So you you gotta see a lot of these things. Uh, they're gonna, you know, they're popping up everywhere. And uh, if you go to any of these UFO reporting sites, they show all the reports of UFOs, man. They're uh, they're dramatically expanding, man. Because we did a show on us, we do the show on everything, mm. I guess. <laughs> we look back <laughs> over the years. <laughs> yep, we yeah. did a show on that. You know, when they say the Simpsons, the, um, there was a Simpsons episode on that. <laughs> so, yeah, we did well, a show on that. <laughs> it's interesting that, um, no joke, I've seen these three, seriously, I, th I see these, I guess if you want to call it, a triangle shape, orb-like crafts over top, I mean, seriously, over top the house, over top of my uncle's house, no mm. joke. We watched them come in one time. It was unbelievable. This was last year, I think. Excuse me. I mean, tw no, I'm, forgive me, it was November 2020, mm. I think. Yeah, no, my day. Well, it's a year over a year ago. Anyways, it was around November, I think. Anyways, uh, wow, we really watched them go over, Dan. Like right, we standing still. It was a little bit cloudy, but not too much. We literally watched them move over, like over top of our head, one after another. It was three of them, right? And then with like within 
30 to 40 seconds after all three of them cleared, here comes a helicopter and literally started hovering at low altitude and going around and then going into the field behind his house and looking around spotlighting. And I thought it was really interesting because it was, you could, you could hear a total silence come up above you. So it was like, wow, what is that? And then not to mention, I'll tell you another random story on my, on my walk when I used to be, uh, an old, you know, delivery guy and delivering stuff. I used to deliver old milk, you know, but, uh, <laughs> did a lot of milk, milk runs, you know, deliver milk. But anyways, uh, there was a gentleman one time, he was like an, he looked like a, he looked like a chemist, you know, like some, he just looked like the profile of a scientist, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, narrow anybody down to that, but he, he did claim to be a professor and all this stuff and claimed to, I happened to be hearing this conversation with one of the clerks. I happened to be delivering and, I think I might have told this on a different platform or maybe this one. But uh, anyways, he he was talking about the triangle form that you just showed there. He was talking about in the 90s that uh, you could hold like, I can't remember if he said 70-something crew members or something. He said that they re-engineered the technology from the so-called aliens. Uh, he was talking about Roswell, all this stuff, and talking about large amount of people could get on and live up in space or so-called space whenever he's telling me a story even back then i think this is like in 2015 and even back then i was like okay so and i even kind of i tuned in on the conversation i said I'm, excuse me sir you know i was like i think what you're talking about referring to as fallen angels and he started saying fallen angels and aliens are totally different so i said oh so you don't you don't disagree with me you believe in fallen angels he said yeah fallen angels and aliens are different things they're totally different i said they're one the same I said, we're talking about the biblical narrative. He said, yeah, biblical narrative, some of, it's, some of it's right, but there's more to it than that. And I was like, okay. So then you get into different species of, um, you know, so-called aliens. And then you get into the different tribes of giants. I said, there's, I said, the, you know, talking about Book of Enoch, I was going on a big rant, you know, and trying to put my two cents in. And he just wasn't having it. He said he served in the 90s when Clint, uh, Clinton served and he was going on this big tangent. And he said he's seen the schematics. He was, you know, talking all this stuff, military people he knew and all those different things. And I knew he wasn't, I knew he wasn't a kook because it's like whenever he got done and walked away, I said, well, you have a blessed day. I talked to the clerk, one of the women there and he, she's like, yeah, he comes in there all the time, random, rambling about aliens and <laughs> how he's worried about getting taken over and abducted. And I was like, are you kidding me? So this guy, I'm telling you, Dan, he was very educated, could speak very fluently, I had a, you could tell he was, yeah, he had a lot of educational. Mm -hmm. I say he had a lot, of, you know, a lot of titles or whatever. But uh, I was trying to, you know, say, you know, tell him some biblical truth and start to he wouldn't have it. I, you know, mentioned Jesus, he wouldn't have it. And uh, but it was interesting that he said fallen angels and aliens. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't discredit the fallen angel narrative. That's what cracked me up. He said they're two different things. He literally said he said they're two different things, and I'm like, whoa, okay, <laughs> you know. So at least he believed in the fallen, but he, but he's over, you know, all he had so much to talk about these triangle shaped crafts, man. He was, he was torn up over triangle crafts. He, he was talking about the schematics and how big they was, the altitude that they could fly and he go and mock 10. I mean, he was going, he was just so adamant about what he, like he'd been there or something. Like he, yeah. like he flew one, like he flew one with a remote control car, you know, like a remote control car. Like he was, like he lived it, breathed it, went to across the ice wall and came back and he was at the family dollar while I was delivering milk. And he was rambling on about his excursions, like he's the second Admiral Bird or something. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I don't know. It was crazy, Dan. But I have seen these triangle crafts, no joke, all day long. I've got pictures. I've got people sending pictures to me just recently of these triangle crafts like this right here at an angle. Like it would be perspective, you know, yeah. your perspective, but it would be at an angle and everything, hovering over their houses in Kentucky for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm showing some pictures of them. So, yeah, it's kind of. Kind of strange, man. Yeah, and, um, yeah. You know, there's no doubt they could probably, uh, some of them could be government planes because I remember uh, the SR-71 Blackbird. Uh, and then I, I think that the Roswell thing, uh, part of that lease or whatever was uh, the SR-71 Blackbird because when they were testing it at the time, because mm -hmm. uh, when you fly, things, even to this day, it's still the fastest aircraft made. 
You know, I mean that thing was oh, a spy yeah. plane, and um, oh, you yeah. literally have to wear a spacesuit to fly that thing, a pressurized suit, because that thing goes so high and it, oh man, that thing's so fast. You have to air stop these things. So, uh, awesome stuff, man. And uh, that that it's a uh, fast aircraft, but they reported a black aircraft with no sound that crashed, and they pulled two bodies out with uh, suits on. So to mm-hmm. me, that sounds like the SR seventy one Blackbird. Uh, but you, you got to remember, guys, because this goes back to what we talked about all the time, Operation Paperclip, when we recruited the Nazi German scientists and all that. They brought all that stealth technology here, the stealth technology and all the, um, mm-hmm. you know, and they would experiment with these UFO crafts, too. You know what I mean? And uh, we, me and David Carrico did a show on this. Uh, UFOs over, Nazis over Antarctica, I think it was called, and uh, how Hitler took the interest in Antarctica and all that stuff. We did a show, me and Brian, and um, on this stuff. So about Hitler worked, was fascinated also with these aliens, these UFOs, and uh, they got a lot of technology from them. And that's why we went over there and recruited the German scientists and, and uh, the SS officers during Operation Paperclip to bring them to work for the United States of America. So these very well could be, I mean, I'm not saying they're not or whatever, but they very well could be uh, government aircraft. You know what I mean? Experimentation, whatever the case mm-hmm. are. And they could be yeah. something from the Nephilim, well, I mean, the, the Fallen Angels, I'm sorry, the... Because you gotta understand too, guys. These um, entities, these beings, don't have powers to. They they need uh, technology to get around. You know what I mean? And they need technology to set up uh, Satan's new world order. So we don't know. It could be either either or both. I mean, they could be working together. Who knows? But uh, there's definitely something out of the ordinary. That's for sure. Well, there used to be this guy. Uh, I hadn't heard nothing from him for a while. Like I wouldn't. I wasn't putting any. Mm. You know, like. Uh, hope and his knowledge what he was you know passing along on the world of youtube but i'm not going to say his name or mock him or anything but he was talking about the galactic federation he would claim to be caught uh christ consciousness you know that kind mm. of narrative like say he's of christ and we're going through this change of spiritual enlightenment and all this stuff and his narrative was that those three, those three dotted ships, those three, the pyramid-like ships that are in the sky, that was and literally what's so ironic. The whenever I seen when I was on my uh, in my uncle's driveway in that November, um, there was three of them that we seen hover over the house. So I was like, okay. And then according to this guy that used to, I just listened to him because I just I thought it was kind of interesting that he was just spewing off this gurgitating this garbage but he would he would put a lot of a lot of food for thought in he was like okay um there's three ships and there's the dumbs the people the children that they're removing from the dumbs that would be tunnel systems and all these secret you know supposedly places that are hidden that are under the ground all these people that are you know supposedly this hidden cities and all this stuff and um he said that they would take the people because they couldn't live on their top of the surface because their eyes couldn't uh, develop. And they would take them up to these so-called Galactic Federation. And there's these not they wasn't supposedly all human or whatever. But he's like, they're here to help us. And I'm like, wow. And then it kind of go along with, you know, Mr. Magoo that I used to see at the Family Dollar and stuff like that. These these narratives that kind of fit in to what they're spinning, what he was talking about from since probably since the 1990s. And then you got, then they got this guy in the 2020s talking about this so-called galactic federation. That's helping the people that are underground heal their eyesight so they can live a good life on, they don't have, supposedly we don't have the technology on the upper soil. So they have to spin them. They have to, you know, make them levitate to a, a magical, I hate to use that word, uh, hovercraft to be able to, uh, give them some type of new enlightenment i mean it's just bizarre stuff dan bizarre stuff you know and i just was like man he was like yeah it's food for thought and i'm like no it's not food for thought it makes me feel ignorant but yeah. um but you know whatever whatever there's a lot of people running around wolf sheep's clothing you know it's like okay you gotta you gotta pray about this stuff guys it's crazy yeah you do and um so yeah, it, it really is. It's like, yeah, I hate when they say food for thought. It's like all right, it yeah. makes no sense. <laughs> so it's not food at all. It's more like diarrhea for thought, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Oh, you know, yeah, you there's say, oh, oh, devil's advocate. You know, what I mean, it's like I hate when people say that. It's like oh, I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a minute. Yeah. Like, no, what do you mean the devil's advocate? From, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what do you mean the devil's advocate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to advocate but the devil. That means it's yeah. a lie. 
anything from yeah, the devil's yeah. life. So yeah, go good luck with that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm breaking to this too. Uh, this is a couple odd things going on, man. Uh, is I don't know if to laugh or just puke on us, but uh, Florida man, <laughs> a 36 year old kid, right, Chad Mason. He was arrested on several charges, including sexual activity with an animal. So this Florida man was arrested after having public sex with a dog, damaging the church nativity scenes. And what in the mm-hmm. hell was going through these people? Was this guy possessed or something? I mean, who knows? But a Florida, a Florida man was arrested after he had sex with a dog in front of a family's, wrecked the nativity scene there by a church and attempted to steal a vehicle. When, like, who does that? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to run up to a dog and have sex with a dog. In front of people, and what a something's going on here. This guy may might have flipped his lid or probably possessed, whatever, because nobody just does that, you know. So, no. 36 year old was arrested Sunday on several charges, including sexual activity with an animal, exposing sexual organs, and criminal mischief to place of worship. So, Mason knew the owner of the gold golden doodle dog, all right. So, he knew the owner of the golden doodle dog and was taking it out for a walk in the apartment complex. So, he, I guess he was taking his dog out. And um, so, he then began to have sex with the dog in front of multiple adults and children who are under 16 years old. So, yeah. And one adult witness in front of Mason when he fled the scene to Northwood Presbyterian Church. Uh, thank you, guys. So, uh, Gwen, thank you for the donation. Yeah, thank you, Gwen. Bless you. But, man, this is crazy, right? And he entered the church and proceeded to knock over the nativity display, breaking several potty plants and throwing children's toys from the playground or area and Mason's actions resulted in an estimated four hundred dollars in damage to the church according to officials. What in the like it, Yeah, uh, this guy just does and he doesn't I mean like I don't know man. Look at him, he just looks like um a clean cut person. You know what I mean what this guy either flipped his lid or I uh, or some kind of a spiritual thing attacked him man or like an unclean spirit or something because Whatever possess you to do, have sex with a dog first of all. That you know that that alone right there. Then do the, this stuff in front of children, and then go around just do random crimes like that. That's kind of odd, man. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> words can't even describe that either, Dan. Yeah. No. <laughs> when you when I, I just the stuff you've been bringing tonight, man, I just get speechless. I'm just like, man, I don't even know. I'm just yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep praying for the broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah there's some strange stuff i mean you got that you got the animals going in circles oh, yeah. i mean everybody's flipping their lid you know it's like uh, just some strange stuff going on I, I don't i don't know you got one group of people saying that you know this gets into the alien phenomenon and stuff then you know they got the reptilians are taking over the planet you know and you got that's why there's so much craziness going on the you got another thing. They're saying Nibiru's here. It's causing a magnetic pull, pole shift that's causing man's brains to turn into mush. Maybe that's what's wrong with this guy that you're speaking of on this this Florida, Florida article here. Maybe he's maybe his brain turned to mush because the magnetic field came over and caused him to be disoriented. I don't know, Dan. Yeah, I'm, man. I guess I'm giving him. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, commit it's sick. And, yeah, but I mean for real, they there's they had they try to discredit they try to like they try to spin whatever you know like well they people just losing their minds because the birds and the animals are telling us too yeah there's something significantly going on for sure but I mean yeah. this isolated incident here with this guy man I mean it reminds me of full blown just legion coming up into him and taking him over you know yeah and, and I, I mean I can see if yeah some just, wacko but you look like a clean cut guy yeah like normal guy. Living in the complex, yeah, he, whatever, yeah. and working a job, and uh, we would possess them to do that. Maybe it was a, it, it could be anything. I'm not defending the guy, but maybe he broke up with his girl and he snap, you know, flipped his lid or any, you know, what I mean, we don't know, you know, what I mean, or it could be an unclean spirit that would actually make somebody do that stuff, you know, what I mean, who's gonna just do that, you know, what I mean, it sounds like to me a spirit because why would they go attack a nativity scene? You know what I mean? Mm. Why would they just go do these random things like that? You know, and that's what demons would do. They would go attack something like that. They would do some sexual thing with an animal or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean, and that's what they yeah. did when they were alive. In the Nephilim, they had sex with animals and um, women and everything else. And yeah, and anything that walked literally. You know what I mean? That's why God said all flesh was corrupt. You know what I mean? Uh, and and un- and unnatural affection. Yep. That's what the Bible talks about too. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah, you're speaking of the well, sheep. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard that, but uh, there's a large flock of sheep uh, strangely walking circles for hours, uh, for days, I mean, I guess. Yeah, uh, it's been days and days. I don't even know. Heck, they might be still j- jumping around. Uh, you know, different. I heard different. I heard, okay, so I heard uh, not just not just sheep. I heard dogs. I heard somewhere in Australia, I heard kangaroos was doing it or something like that. I heard all kinds of different narratives about it, right, Dan? Yeah. I heard that it was all happening around the same time when this this was in China with the biblical uh, when there's biblical sheep strangely walking in circles for days, weeks. You know all this 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 article here that you're showing, but uh, I heard it was in China with the sheep. Um, then people online was trying to discredit it, disprove it, and say that this has been happening for years. And I will tell you this, Dan, I've seen a, a, a video or something clip years back talking about like they had an iPhone and then they had like the bugs. It would, they would literally, whenever the phone would ring, yep. the ants would interact and spin in a circle formation every time the phone, ref- the, the frequency of the phone of the ring. So they turned, they would circle in circumference. They would circle the iPhone. So when you think about that, and I'll, I'll just tell you, Dan, this is way out. This is another thing. This is another theory of mine. E- either some people will say, well, it's, it's something to do with earthquakes or volcano eruption or something, seismic activity that's in the ground. I'm, I'm, I'm more thinking that it's more something above ground, like pushing down and it's causing an isolated event like these, you know, all these places that they're pulling. It's something above causing a magnetic, some type of magnetic shift of some magnetic form, something, some kind of some kind of frequency and it's causing them to do that because you see like birds falling out of the sky. You see all these different things coming out. You you, like bees, everything that's up in the air, the the files of the air, right? So they're losing their, like their GPS system. And it reminds me if there's something there that they call it an anomaly, but it's like, if you went in there with the EMF reader, right? And went around and see if there's a strong frequency. But if you had a drone and you you drew the you flew the EMF reader, electric magnetic mm-hmm. field, to see what was reading up at the top, you know, there could be something up in the sky that's causing these guys to spin like that and turn and twist. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's just it can't be it just can't be that simple. It can't be that simple. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like okay. And then you, then what was so bad about it, they even the the so called uh, specialist or you know uh, of animal. Sp- experts yeah. and animal specialists of these sheep and looking at it um they was trying to explain away what was going on and oh yeah i think we figured this out i think it's this i think it's that i think it's this and um let me just tell you they they'll just make up anything and i you know here's what i couldn't think here's what i couldn't even contemplate i was like why aren't you all if you won't stop looking at it won't you go out there and start putting fence posts to like mess with them like to, you know, I mean, like not hurt them, but like put something, a barrier to see if they'll continue doing the circle formation. <laughs> if you have that much time and you you have this much publicity, you know, and, and, you know, nationwide or world, world, global wide of this narrative, why can't you put something like a barrier and see if they'll still do the pattern and then make a make a good con- conclusion of your data, of your scientific data? You know, what I mean, but maybe I'm just maybe I just don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, I would be like trying to put something up like a barrier to see if they continuate the pattern with the barrier. You know what I'm saying? And like make it a like a maze and see if they continuate the circle formation in the maze instead of being like evaluating it. Let's, you know, like, oh, they're just let them spin out of control. Mm. Well, why don't you stop them and then see if they'll still do it? I seen, a, it might have been last year. I think it was either elk. I think it might have been elk last year. Um, they did that in a farm. It did it three. They there was like three different circle formations, and they was in different fence lines in close proximity. They was doing uh, like formations exactly like the sheep. And I think it was last year. I think it was elk did the exact same narrative. So I'm like, man, there's something more going on. It's something above. It's something above, guys. It well, has to be. It reminds me of the mass animal dinosaurs, right? Like you see, uh. Like this over here talks about uh, still unsolved to this day from Time Magazine. Uh, Southern blackbirds, American honeybees, bats with white noise syndrome. Oh, yeah. Chilean Chilean birds and Australian pilot whales. Uh, You got hippopotamuses, frogs, uh, all kinds of stuff, livestock. And there was um, Mm -hmm. one I think was like all tuna or uh, 
salmon, whatever it was. But the, here's the thing, right? I can see, right? Or for a bunch of pigeons for drop from the air. We've seen that video. The bunch of pigeons, they just went down. Like, it was like a hundred of them just died, dove to the ground. You know what I mean? For no reason, you know? And, um, you know, they just die off of one species, you know? I can see, all right, if, watch the shore. I can see when you have, like, thousands of tuna, right? I can see if there were squids in there. I can see if there was salmon in there and other kinds of fish, right? But when you have one specific species, thousands of them laying on the beach dead, there's something other than, you know, what's going on, you know? And again, oh, if yeah. it was like um, all kinds of sea animals, then that could be explained. It could be some radiation. They, you know, something could happen, whatever. But when you have only one species, right? Because say, you, you know, in the, especially you got the birds, right? You got pigeons, you got seagulls, you got all kinds of crows and everything else. But just when... The blackbirds, just blackbirds, no eagles, no nothing else, just blackbirds laying there, thousand dead. Yeah, no pigeons. Yeah, it's a little weird, isn't it? You know what I mean? When you I see agree, cattle, man. like a bunch of cows dead, right? But the mooses oh. and all that. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. Speaking of, I did have an article on that, Dan. Oh yeah. And I've I've lost it. Um, animals, animals. Where are my animals at? Um, they was blaming it. Yeah, like uh. So uh, they're trying to explain away the phenomenon, but there's another thing happening in Alaska mm. four days ago. Um, uh, I, I won't get much into it, but it, it's t- it, just get, I won't even show it. It's just talking about a bunch of stuff and the narrative. They're trying to do some research. They're talking about these whales. Um, the mystery, it's like Alaskan, there's Alaska's disappearing whales and they say, and what blows my mind, I'll, I'll, I'll bring something, I'm not going to share it, but, um, I will chime in a little bit. Do you remember seeing, it oh, might've been four oh, or five yeah. years ago, might've been four or five years ago. Did you see, um, where a whale, I think it was in Brazil, there was a baby whale, no joke. There was a baby whale out in the middle of nowhere. And the locals and everything, I've talked about on this show before, the locals and everything was walking around and looking at the vultures up in the sky. And it's like, hey, there's something must be really bad dead over there, you know, because it's like in the middle of the forest. Sure enough, it was just huge whale. It looked like it just been laid down, just, you know, like miraculously just flown in and just yeah. dropped down on the ground. Um, I'll never get over that. And that, then another thing I'll never get over is this phenomenon that they say, and they blame it on hurricanes and stuff like that. Um, I couldn't believe like the fish that was falling from the sky. I couldn't believe that brim, yeah. like different type bass, different types of fish. Uh, it was like in Japan, China and different, I know they're surrounded by bodies of water in J- Japan, but, um, I couldn't believe there was some out here somewhere that happened here in America. Uh, I don't know if it was Tennessee or some other state close by me, but I can't remember. And then alligators, no joke. Like yeah. there was footage. I think it might've been in the Philippines or something. We literally walk just driving down the street. And then little baby alligators are bashing the, your windshield. And, I mean, you're out in the middle of nowhere. And there's yeah, alligators. I mean, come on, Dan. 2020, right? Yeah, something like that. Alligators so, fall from the sky. Yeah, I mean, come on, Dan. What is all that? Charleston, South and, and Carolina. See, yeah, what is all that? I mean, we can say, yeah, we can say, and then when you look at it, they're like, well, there was hurricane and bad weather. Well, let me tell you something. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not that intelligent. I mean, I'm just <laughs> foolish in my thinking, but um, if I see, if I fall from the sky out of a plane, um, yeah, some of the, like, these things was falling, hitting the window, and it was walking off, and if I fall out of the sky, which that, I will talk about that one more time, I have been looking at that there's been literally reports of people just, like, miraculously falling from a large high place, but there's nowhere, you know, there's nothing, like, there's no evidence of anything no high mountains they just they impact the ground and they're they have no clothes on so let's just go there and then if the same narrative with these alligators these fish etc whales just you know randomly just popping up and just mm. appearing out of nowhere hitting windshields um i don't know about you but water really bad storm if it i'm talking about a mass loads of little baby alligators little baby fish something's not adding up you know wow. something's not adding up dan because it wouldn't it wouldn't sporadically if something was falling from the sky, and I know this because I had some friends tell me some stories when I used to ride motorcycles years ago, when you have deer that get hit by semis and you don't know and you're riding them, you're riding at midnight at night and you don't know that you have a huge buck coming at, you know, 
100 mile an hour at you and you're driving 80 to 100 mile an hour it's gonna be a bad day and it lands on top of you that actually happens to some of the people that i know of that happen, and, it, and it's a horrible mess what i'm getting at the impact was horrific on that situation so if you're falling from a high of a high altitude <laughs> something's you know what i'm saying dan something's not adding up and you mean yeah. we're gonna blame it on a hurricane just miraculously like bringing in just you know, let's just lay our little animals on the ground, nice and softly. I'm not, I'm not buying it, man. I know it's, mm -hmm. a, I know it's a little out there. Oh, it is. It's very weird. And, and then you have meteorites coming out of the sky. Yeah. You have meteors coming out of the sky and hitting houses and catching them on fire, blowing mm -hmm. holes through a hood or whatever. But I'm just not, I'm not buying it, man. Yeah. How does the alligator fall from the sky, man? It's crazy. And uh, but yeah, there's all the and, documentation of it right there, you know, and uh, all kinds of fish and all that stuff. And I did find that in the Alaska thing, too, the article. Uh, oh, please, put it up if you want to. Yeah, yeah. In Alaska, a mystery di over disappearing uh, whales. So bogus past cultural knowledge across generations. Their survival may depend on how they collectively adapt. So I don't know. This is a, I didn't get to read this yet, guys. But I guess it's a um, yeah, mystery of <laughs> disappearing whales in Alaska. So Brian knows more on this than me. Yeah, so... What kills me is I keep saying that it's something to do with the uh, the pressure and they're they're migrating to different. They know the hum the human climate, the climate change narrative. Uh, that's what they keep spinning it. They know they're saying that the these animals are very advanced, very intellectual, intelligent, and all this stuff. And they know when there's so top some type of pressure, you know, coming down the pike and saying, "Hey, we got to stay away from this area," and then we got to migrate to you know. To only the father knows, right? But these people make these insane, insane theories. And, you know, they keep having massive die off in other countries. You know, the fish and the whales come up on the dolphins, come up on the shore, you know. And I remember seeing a video not too long ago, Dan. They, people was literally trying to help people go, like, literally help pull the dolphins and these baby whales back into the ocean but they would just like come back. Like they would like, it's like they wanted to just pass away or something. Like they would jump and they would not go into the water. They'd pull, they would, you know, haul these heavy, heavy, heavy animals back into the water. And then they would come back on the shore and get back on the beach and try, you know, just act like they wanted to pass away. You know, it's yeah. crazy, man. Oh, Something's going on. Something's yeah. going on there. And it could be a preview of, uh, you know, Revelation yeah. talks about beasts in the fields dying off and, you know, all that stuff, you know what I mean? And that uh, very well could be a preview to, yeah, because uh, these things happen by increments, you know what I mean? Birth pains, oh, as yeah. the Bible talks about it, you know what I mean? Birth pains, Absolutely. And they, they get worse and worse, and that's exactly that could be, you know what I mean? And I, I, that's what I think it is. To oh, yeah. Truth. Especially with the God's creatures like that. Yeah. Because they're in tune, they're in a different tuning. All these animals have different frequencies than we do. They, yeah. They're in tune to the earth actual physical earth you know like they under you know they understand things a little different when it comes to their environment we 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 as a human uh society we we turn i'm, I'm being sarcastic here we've turned away from the creator and we want man to tell us what to do and the bible says don't trust man we will uh we will turn away from what the father has put in instruction manual and we'll just we'll just think that we're superior and believe what man tells us yeah. But, you know, the animals are saying, uh, hey, human, there's something horribly going on here. And I'm trying to warn you, but you decide to just listen to what the the narrative that these people are regurgitating out of their mouth with their 10,000 PhDs. And it's frustrating. It's uh, it's frustrating. You know, if I seen a look, Dan, I'm just going to be honest with you. If I seen an alligator come up to me and hit the dash or hit the top of the house and start like want me to pet it. You know, and not want me, you know what I'm saying? Like, come here, little, come here, little crocodile. Or if I have a grizzly bear come up to me and he, you know, or a tiger or something walking up and down the street and laying in my yard, um, I'm going to be, li I'm going to think, I'm going to say, God, we have a problem here. I need to be, you know, I need to pray before I get ate up. But I'm saying if they're going around asking all, acting all domesticated and want to be like a little fluffy uh, chia pet that you can, you know, little plant things used to grow and they just sit there, just sit on your front porch, we have a problem. Yeah. And um, I'm not buying it, man. Yeah. I'm not buying it. Like, uh, if they, you know, and I mean, yeah, the days of Noah, that did happen. 
but uh yeah i'm gonna be listening i'm gonna be like what are you what are you all doing mm-hmm. you know like you know there's something here you're trying to god's trying to tell me something i'm not going to sit here and call the you know the uh animal control and you know say hey i got a bunch of animals out here just falling from the sky you know or floating around here you know i guess i'll just explain it away i guess the I guess the tide from the, you know, the biometric pressure of 2.5, you know, longitude, you know, just start yeah. making up stuff. You know, it's ignorant. It's crazy, man. And it's like, but anyways, uh, I'll... The, you know, the snowstorms, uh, the, they call them, uh, I don't know what the cyclones are now. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Waiting and thunder going on in the middle of, um, I remember that so when it first started happening, it was like, Snowing out heavy, and also heard lightning and thunder. I'm like, what yeah. the heck? Never. <laughs> yeah. That's never happened. Never. And they want to yeah, say, know, this right. is normal. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in New England, that's never happened. Or uh, a tornado in the middle of a blizzard. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> yeah. I know what you're... And they act like this is normal. You know, they try to dismiss it as normal and not make a big deal about it. And like, am I hearing things? Uh, Lightning and thundering, you can see the lightning flash and everything else. And, <laughs> you know, you know, and uh, yeah. tornadoes going off in the middle of the blizzards. Like, what the heck is going on? That's that's as bad as bad as the uh, Sierra Desert uh, that happens that they say that happens in Russia, and yeah. the sands the sands get carried up from the wind currents, and uh, they have orange snow, and they <laughs> call it a phenomenon that happens. And they have this orange snow, the Sierra da- Desert carries thousands of sand, literally. Thousands of grains of sand fly through the atmosphere and then get dropped into Russia in some place in Russia. I can't remember where it's at, Diane, but and then they have orange snow cream, you know. I'm just being silly, but that's what they call it, like orange snow. Wow. And I'm not buying it, guys. Just don't eat the it, yellow it, snow. Yeah, no joke. But the thing is, it just blows my mind, Dan. Like, if you just think about it, if you just go outside and pick up dirt and you go, okay, pick it up, wind, and if it goes and just fits, it's gonna hit the ground or it's gonna blow down the street. But it's not going to be picked up, you know, 2,000, 4,000 miles away and say, well, I made it. You know, I mean, it doesn't make it. I'm going to lay on this nice, pretty little fluffy snow cloud. You know, no, I'm not buying it, you all. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's just that just doesn't there's no logic thinking on that. It's yeah. insane world, man. It's crazy. But anyways, oh, yeah, I'm know, going on my rant is for a second here. And um, this is, uh, of course, from coming from the Pope, right? So Breitbart Magazine's reporting that uh, Pope Francis asked non-believers to send him good vibes in lieu of prayers. So good vibes is a new age concept. You know I mean, good vibrations and, uh, you know, the vibrations of the universe, all that new age garbage, right? So why would a Pope now, we know, uh, I think everybody of us that's watching, we all know that Pope's not a man of God. We, we, we all know that. But for new listeners that don't know any better, why would a so-called man of God ask for good vibes? Well, actually, you know, I should say that because even in the most Christian churches today, they adopted the New Age concept, and that's what they're preaching too, which is disgusting. So, yeah, no person of God should say good vibes. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. That's a New Age concept, plain and simple. So, and uh, so Pope Francis requests prayers Friday, or at least good vibes, from those who do not know how to pray or do not believe in God. So, he's like, oh, we need your prayers and your good vibes. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I asked you not to forget to pray for me. The pontiff, he's like, I asked you not to pray for me. You know, the, the way yeah. he talks. The pontiff urged members of the French organization leaders of purely pillar pox. And if someone does not pray because they he does not know or cannot, at least send me good vibes. I need them for this work. All right, good vibes <laughs> is not going to do anything. All right, plain and simple because there's no such thing. Press from God. Does work, yeah, absolutely. But in Saturday's address, the Pope focused on overcoming the war and working for peace, in, uh, insisting that trying to resolve conflicts with weapons of signs of weakness and fragility, where negotiation, meditation. Sorry, gets into the um the whole Ukraine garbage thing, whatever. But mm. yeah, about asking for good vibes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just speechless with that. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it reminds me. What was that old song? I'm picking up something. I vibrations or something. What was that song? What was good that song? Vibrations. Yeah, yeah. Good vibrations. Yeah, I guess Beach that's what Boys. he's singing. I guess. Yeah, Beach Boys. That's what yeah. I guess. That's probably he probably invite him over to sing that song or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Good vibrations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only on Spiritual Warfare Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. bust out the guitar. We'll <laughs> good vibrations. <laughs> 
Oh, man. <laughs> I had to go there, Dan. That's the first thing I thought of whenever you were yeah. saying, my bro, you know, give me the good vibes, you know. That's Pope saying. You know, we did that whole Nimrod show, right? Remember yeah. we was talking about frequency and stuff and yeah. worship and all the Tatarian type of, you know, the architect work and stuff and, uh, you know, the worship of it. You know, the when we was talking about the uh, over there in the Vatican and stuff, it's just, uh, it's crazy, man. There's more to it than, it's just, there's more to it. You know, to, I don't know, man. There's all, we can go anywhere. Now, Elon Musk, I mean, wherever you want to go from here, the asteroid that's going to come in, in pending doom well, that they're talk talking about. about. The and we'll save the Elon Musk stuff for uh, Friday. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, the if you want to talk about the asteroid or I can talk about the asteroid. Sure. Go so it. it blows my mind. It blows my mind. It's just everybody that's in the broadcast. I'm gonna get a little serious. You know, we, we're gonna sing the good vibration song, Beach Boys. But uh, <laughs> I'm just being silly. But you can just do an asteroid 2022 Google search, and it'll talk about uh, just any article that you can pull from. It'll say, you know, asteroid danger looms, 170 foot space rock heading for Earth today. That was two days ago. Uh, one day ago, a 69-foot asteroid coming to shockingly clo close to the Earth. NASA clock speed at uh, 49,897,000, you know, you know, miles per hour, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, didn't we just read an article a while ago about the submarine and the ancient, uh, you know, the 1990 event when they're underwater? This thing, you know, it's just a a blimp in their uh, visual system, their peripheral, they can barely see it. It's just going at, you know, what, 4,000 miles an hour. But this guy, I like how they can measure it. And then you have, just like what happened to that poor guy's, uh, what was that asteroid that came down, supposedly meteorite that came down and burnt that guy's, um, uh, let me see. Uh, well, it burnt down his home, him and his wife and doll. We talked about it a little bit a while, a few weeks back. It was in California, I think, or something. The meteorite come down. And there was a bunch of eyewitnesses talking about that, that it slowed down. And if you if you look and go back and do a little research in the last 10 years and looking into uh, meteorites, there's eyewitnesses. Even They'll even come out and say it. Yeah, it slowed down before it got through some type of atmospheric, you know, whatever, weather phenomenon, pressure, you know, whatever. And they'll say it slows down and I'm like, okay, you know, it's going to slow down after it's coming in. So, so a billion, you know, 50,000 miles an hour or whatever, and it's just going to slow down and miraculously not even put it. I mean, and then when he hits the ground, Dan, it's like you could probably do more damage if you drove a car, you know, drove a car off of a airplane and drop, you know what I'm saying? And hit yeah. the impaled into the ground. I just don't understand it, guys. And like some the of the stuff right? doesn't. So that, this is what gets me right. So they can't even produce a full picture of like this is NASA minutes. They they admit that they Photoshop pictures of the Earth, right, to put it together. Right? Oh yeah. So they can't p uh, produce a full picture, a live picture of the Earth, right? But yet they're gonna give you the exact. They, they sometimes they even give you the weight. They could tell you the exact sixty nine feet and then whatever thousand pounds or whatever, and they give you the exact <laughs> diameter of the in the trajectory, yeah, yeah. right, of a rock. All right, in the middle of the blackness yeah, yeah. of space, right? How do you see a <laughs> rock in the middle of blackness? First of all, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it makes no sense. I mean, I'm not saying these things. Uh, I don't know, man, but th we know there's a firmament, you know what I mean? And uh, we don't, we're not saying that things don't fall from the firmament because God does send things out of the firmament, you know? But the thing is, they put this all the time, and I think it just keeps the funding coming in because every once in a while they'll throw out a little scare. Oh, an asteroid came close to the earth or whatever, and it's a they call it global killers, right? And we know, here's the thing, and I want everybody to understand this. Right? When you see this garbage on TV, right? Do understand one thing. There's never going to be an asteroid that's going to come and destroy the Earth. I could 100 million, trillion percent assure you of that. Why? Because this book called the Bible, right, the Word of God, it lays out exactly what happens to this Earth. God is the one eventually that ends up, you know, causing fire on this Earth to cleanse it. You know, he makes a new heaven and a new Earth. But you think God's going to allow, okay, a uh, rock from nowhere to come and destroy this planet that he built and he has plans for it? No. And I can a hundred, I can uh, firmly assure you with full confidence that there's not going to be any asteroid. And yeah, I'm not going to say it's not going to hit because they do hit. We understand that, but to destroy the entire Earth, that's never going to happen. 
And I show you that. And we understand the scripture does talk about, uh, you know, rocks the size of mountains coming, you know, polluting one thirds of the ocean, 33% of it, whatever the case. And But it's not a global kill, like they say. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So don't ever let these people scare you. And all it does is it keeps funding coming in. Absolutely. That's all it does to make them what seem was what was that movie? What was it Armageddon with yeah. Bruce Willis? Was that 1998 or 2000 or something like yeah. that? So it's like right before all this stuff. Wasn't it 1999 or 2000 or 99 or something? And they, it's all what Deep Impact wasn't. Uh, I'm doing this all by memory. Wasn't Deep Impact in 1997? Yep. And all these different, you know, all these different narratives, right? And it's just like spinning the, it just spinning the narrative. You know, back then they was talking about space. You know, but well, they still are, but they was doing really good i hate to say it but productions what independence day and stuff like that and putting millions and millions hundreds of millions of dollars into it and then turn around 2022 you know 20 plus years later we're literally they're saying yeah the aliens are here and they're doing all these different what marvel movies and stuff like that to do with space and literally saying oh yeah these are the aliens and and you know it goes along with samaritan and mesopotamia and all these different you know characters that these uh uh, I just can't believe it, Dan, that mm. you can go look that stuff up and they're getting so deep into the characters that are in the Marvel universe yeah. and they all have to do with deities of ancient, ancient days. You know, it blows mm. my mind. So. Yeah. It's crazy, man. And that, yeah, it's all this uh, apocalyptic stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, mm. that's funny too. Cause like um, another thing, like it's a pet peeve too. When they talk about nuclear bombs and they say about uh, Armageddon, right? And I'm going to tell you right out when they talk about well, nuclear bombs turning down, no, uh, nuclear bombs are falling, right? If they fall, there's nothing compared to what Armageddon is going to be. <laughs> you know, let's put that yeah. straight right there. So nuclear bombs have nothing to do with Armageddon because Armageddon is when, you know, the Lord comes back and kicks the snot out of the New World Order. Plain and simple. You know what I mean? That's worse than any nuclear bomb. So, yeah. Uh, you know, but, yeah, it, it just baffles me that they could, they'll have a name for it, like a rock that is, just coming out of nowhere, right, in, in the blackness, right? They could tell you exactly the length of it, the size of it, even sometimes how much it weighs, the whole nine yards, the precise trajectory, the speed it's going, but yet they can't produce a picture of the Earth. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'll turn, yeah, I agree, Dan. It's insane. And then they'll say, then they'll send it and say, well, we, we couldn't monitor all of them. We, we couldn't. That one came out of the blue. That one came out of the blue, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you monitor the rest of them but you can't this one came out of the blue so just you know what is it can you not monitor them all can you monitor just the ones you choose or can you just monitor the ones that you draw up in your backyard you know what i mean on a yeah. canvas or photoshop or whatever you know is that the ones you can draw or whatever there has to be somebody needs to come forth with something i mean there's somebody out there that knows yeah. And but they're they're just spinning the lie to keep us filled with you know media controlled you know uh, indoctrination. It's nothing to do with uh, giving them out you know making us feel there's they don't want us to know anything. So they're just dumbing us down, spoon feel spoon feeding us still most propaganda stuff I've ever seen in my life. For real, it has to be. Look, it's, it's a wide the scale. The London Guardian that says, "Oh, huge planet killer asteroid discovered and it's heading our way." But the diameter, yeah. now that they know exactly, like, oh, the diameter is one to two kilometers. The space rock named 22, whatever that AP7 crosses our orbit, but has no chance of hitting Earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, me and Dan's talking about alligators falling out of the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody's reporting. You know what I mean? They'll report <laughs> it, but then, like, you get what I'm saying? You think that'll be it's headline like, news and Fox and, you know, CNN? Yeah. I mean, if I'm, I'll be like the the second crocodile Dundee. You know what I'm saying, Crocky. <laughs> you know, whatever. You know, like we got us a, we got us a big whopper here. You know, or whatever. You know, it's coming in hot. You know, we got us a, a seventeen foot, Cranky. seventeen footer, seventeen foot giant alligator getting ready to eat everybody. It's falling out the sky. But um, you know, they're not, they're not doing that. It it just, it, they just, it's just, it's un, it's insane where we're at, Dan. It's insane. Oh, check this one out. Uh, two days, four days ago, it says a two hundred nine foot asteroid uh, rushing toward Earth today, and we will come mm. close to comfort. Why, why is it always too close to comfort all the time? Yeah, and they know exactly. Uh, how do you know it's two hundred nine feet? How do you? Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tremendous destructive power, it says. It's size and speed, and it's a tremendous destructive power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But- and, and then... And then, meanwhile, they're telling us to eat bugs and uh, do all these other things that are just ignorant yep. to any aspect of understanding. But you mean to tell me that you can, like you're saying, Dan, they can narrow down the size and the weight and everything, but we can't even get chips, yep. like in a vehicle, or we can't even do something on the ground. We don't even know the waters in the ocean. We don't even know how to, I mean, heck, they don't even know how to build half the people. We're just completely dumbed down to automation. Yeah. We can't even, we can't build anything. We can't do anything because they're not teaching anything. It's all being automated with the AI system, right? So it's just, it, you know, how in the world can they measure all this? It's crazy. Yeah. And oh, yeah, look at this. Uh, they, they know exactly, oh, it'll come close as the, 70 well 7 million 349,467 kilometers and it's astonishing speed of 300 you know 32,727 kilometers per hour mm-hmm. yeah yeah Unreal, man <laughs> and we had a troll yeah. in the chat room Mary Thalander go stay in oh. our bubbles yeah you know what? it's like you're the one living in the bubble because <laughs> Yeah, you just do what NASA's told, and she's like, oh, yeah. It's like, well, how do you argue with NASA science? Math. Well, first of all, it's not science, and it's um, stupidity from Matt. NASA. It really is. Man. Yeah, I don't. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to get in an argument with yeah. her. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll pray. I don't, and I'll, you know, that that just wants to get us a con- like into conflict. I don't want to get yeah. in conflict. I don't want to get in conflict with anybody. No. I actually want to talk about it, you know, like, um, there has to be something. The deception is off the chart. And if, you know, unfortunately some of these people, they just, they believe, and I'm not saying I look at all avenues of understanding here. I'm not just saying that, but I do believe in the earth being biblical cosmology standpoint, but I will, I will look at, you know, like we talked about tonight, you know, with the spacecrafts and stuff like that, if you want to call them that, I'll look at that about the, you know, the, well, they levitate off the ground and stuff like that. Um, there is there is truth to stuff that can hover off into the sky because you can go back and look. We talked about in biblical accounts, you know, the chariots of fire, you know, to make Ezekiel's will, you know, stuff like that. You know, the, the Zechariah 5, what we talked about in the, in the uh, Friday show. Um, there's gateways, portals, you know, whatever. You know, there's all kinds of things that are into play and, um, the cover up is just to, we're defragmented. We don't understand. Like we just, first thing that somebody tells us, we go and run and say it's true. We don't put any thought and understand. We don't research it ourselves. We just, we take off and run with it. And that's what we've been conditioned to do, unfortunately. And I'm not trying to be mean that we've all done it. I've done it, you know, myself. So I would never get in an argument. You know, when she said we can stand her bubble, I pray I I would, you know, I'm not, I would love to have a conversation. I wouldn't ever want to, you know, and the main thing is on this channel, I know we've talked about some wild stuff on here tonight is to, uh, cleave to the blood of the lamb, you know, the garment of Jesus, you know, uh, regardless, you know, if you tell us to stay in our bubble or not, that bubble is going to pop one day. If you don't, and if you don't know Jesus, it ain't going to matter what we talked about an asteroid falling from the sky or whatever or alligator flying and hitting the windshield if you don't have jesus it's it's not going to be good you know in any shape or form so i'm just throwing it out there yeah yeah and if you want to believe well, mary if you want to, whatever you would believe you know i can't force you you know what i mean so god bless you uh so i just hope the spirit the holy spirit i should say um just reaches out to you that's all you know and uh god bless you so I know, and here's the thing too, in your defense, Mary, and I can understand where you're coming from too, because somebody that's coming straight from the world that like, tunes into something like this, they're like, wow, these guys are either wackos or there's something going on. You know what I mean? Because this is a bitter pill to swallow. And people in the chat room too you understand this too. When somebody just discovers this stuff, this is a bitter pill to swallow. Because imagine we all been immersed into this false reality, right? And coming into something like this, you know what I mean? And then you're like, what the heck are they even talking about? You know what I mean? So we got to understand that perspective because 
uh, the world you view when they're coming into something like this, into the truth, yeah, it's a shell shock. It's a culture shock. You know what I mean? So it's a big bitter pill to swallow. The red pill there, if you want to call it that. It's a big bitter pill to swallow. So we got to understand where she's coming from too. Uh, so Mary, if you're listening, um, I understand you, but do know, keep an open mind about it and pray about it. If you, if you believe and um, you'll see the truth, you know what I mean? So I can't, you know, all I could do is show you the door. That's it. And you're the one that has to walk through it. But either way, God bless you. So, uh, and everybody in the chat room too, just understand that too, because these things, uh, mem mem remember when you first woke up, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, Whoa, you know, he like blew my mind, you know? And, uh, and I was defending, um, the globe earth, you know I mean, cause I was into astronomy, but I still have my questions, whatever. Um, but it took, it, well, it, there was a, one of the biggest mental blocks it took. Then I had to trust yeah. the point. Then when I read Rev uh, Genesis, I studied it, studied over and over again, Genesis. And it was clear. And that block went away, you know what I mean? So it took a while for me to adjust to that, you know what I mean? And I was in the faith for how long, you know what I mean? So remember that. It's like um, these things are like eye-awakening things. So we all need to uh, tread carefully, you know what I mean? Not everybody's oh, going to yeah. believe what we believe and uh, how we believe, whatever the case. And all you do is pray for them. That's that. You can tell them and, you know, once you tell them the thing is a watchman, right? God's watchman. Our job is to do this, right? It's to warn people, not to sit there and bash them over the head and try to, like, smack them around. Oh, tell them. Say, and if they turn from their ways, that's great. You know what I mean? If they don't, the blood of, their blood is not on your hands. You know what I mean? We yeah. did our job. We warned them. And if they perish from it, that's on their, their hands. But if we don't warn them, their blood is on our hands. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. That's, uh, the, you know, when it talks about the watchman, that's our job. It was watchmen, all of us, you know. So we told Mary, and uh, all you could do is let, let it settle in her. And uh, hopefully, you know what I mean, she comes to the truth. That's all. Amen. And then another thing, too, uh, real quick, I'll just throw us out here. Um, whenever uh, I started looking into all this uh, about 12 years ago, it's hard It's hard to take it. it it's very hard and... and uh, it can really, like Dan's saying, it can really tear you, it can tear you up pretty bad emotionally. Like if you don't have anybody to talk to about it or anything, it's really hard on you. And then another thing, I want to ask a question. This is blowing my mind. Whenever the NASA director a couple years ago said that they lost the technology to go back to the moon, you know, I just want to ask Miss Mary that. How in the world could you lose most valuable information ever known to, to so-called man when it's advancements of space, you know, you know, as far as travel, space travel, how could you lose the technology that they put so much emphasis in and teaching into the uh, academia? Why would you lose? The, well, how could you lose the technology to go to the moon? I'm just throwing it out there. That's all yeah. I want to ask. That's all I want to ask. I mean, I'm not getting sarcastic. He admit he admits it. He's like, yeah, we lost the technology. To go back to the moon. Okay, how could you lose the technology? Who did you lose it to? Or who did? Or how did you lose it? Yeah. Why would you, you know, if it was so valuable to you, how could you lose something? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, Dan, I'm just making a point. I mean, is that, is that a, is that a logical question to ask? I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, that's and the we truth. talk about NASA. Okay. You know, it's supposed to be the, um, the know all be all, of whatever the case, right? That's what they persuade, persuade to be right. Then how they lose technology to go to the moon. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'd really be backing is. it up. I'd be, you know, I'd be putting on a hard copy. Yeah. I'd be writing on a rock. I'd be typing it. However, I got to back it up on any type of documentation, physical, digital, whatever the shape or form is, right on. A, I don't care. Right on anything, you know, carving into walls, whatever, you know what I'm saying, Dan? Come on now. Cause you'll never know. It's yeah. unreal. And, and to admit it and just to have it sarcastically come off your mouth. Are you just like lying about it? Are you like, why would he say that? I don't even know where that video is, but that is on record. He did say that. Mm. They lie. He did say that. The NASA director did say that. It was several years back. Said we lost the technology to go back to the moon. Why would you say that? You know, there has to be a point of say, okay, you know what I mean? It's just crazy, Dan. Cat the M in the but, chat. She said, Brian, they didn't lose it. They never had it to start with. But yeah, now to that's say, true. They say they lost it. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the true fact. Yep. Or 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 they could have had something to do with, you know, gates like a gate travel, mm. like ancient Andalusian portals to something to shape or form that way. I agree with that, and that's what they might have lost. You know, that's might be what they're referring to, but it is what it is. Yeah, I'm not gonna get an argument. You know, I'm just 
I enjoy talking to have the conversation, yeah. you know, any kind of, you know, that's, that's, you know, just, and then just bring glory to the Lord, you know, that's. And the thing so. is guys, uh, here, here's, uh, this was going to work into these Bible verses here. Um, uh, we're going to work into, um, Friday's show too. So this whole new world order. So what they're doing is they're causing all this stuff you read. This is nothing. And we got tons and tons and tons of stuff. Uh, this is nothing like uh, not even the tip of the spear of the articles and whatnot. We, we you know, could have talked about. We could oh, be yeah. all right doing that, but um, their goal is to create chaos, chaos, confusion. And remember, God's not the author of confusion, right? And they, their chaos is the order out of chaos, right? Uh, no world is to call them the new world order, order out of chaos. You know what I mean? And um, problem, reaction, solution. That's an old Hygelian dialect. So they bring in their peaceful new world order, right? But remember, it's not peaceful because the Bible talks about this. And um, this verse, once again, First Thessalonians 5 3 says, for when they say, so say, peace and safety, right? Now, all the leaders are calling for that, right? Peace and safety. Peace and security. Security and safety is the same thing. And they're calling for that, right? And they followed up with a new old order. Then sudden destruction comes upon them as a, a woman with with, with a child, you know what I mean? That's, um, get, you know, birth, uh, pregnant, you know? And they shall not escape. You know, it refers to as uh, birth pains, you know what I mean? In other words, you know, uh, uh, birth pains comes, you got a little contraction here then all of a sudden increases it doubles and it's quicker and it's less time apart until the baby's born yeah <laughs> we're in that stages right now guys and um john fourteen twenty seven says peace i leave you now check this out right this is very relevant right this is the new world order the global elite whatever you want to call them right the world elite the united nations they promise peace and safety peace and security right for their one world order, right? Their version of peace, but this is a different peace, right? Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives it. This is Jesus talking about the these days, guys, like them, because the whole world's offering peace and security right now. The whole yeah. world. And he goes, I leave the peace I give you, my peace I give it unto you, not as the world gives it to you, but I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So he's saying, don't fear, you know what I mean? Uh, because we know the Bible says uh, there's no room in the kingdom of God for cowards. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Don't be afraid of this stuff because they're offering a fake peace. The United Nations and all that, the one world peace with the mm -hmm. Pope and all that stuff, uh, one world religion of peace, and a one world go government, yeah, of peace. Yeah, that's not the same peace as Jesus. Remember that. That's a fake mm -hmm. world peace. Jesus gives the real world peace. Well, not world peace, but peace within his people. And uh, Philippians uh, 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And Genesis three fifteen mm -hmm. says, and now this is where it all comes from, all of it. This is where it all started, right there. And it's when God confronted Adam, Eve, and the serpent, he says, I will put enmity between the seed of the woman and between the seed of her seed. And they shall bruise thy head, and thy shall bruise the hail. Talking about right here, I mean, when people say, well, Jesus and Satan or whatever is not mentioned in the, in the Old Testament, well, it's right here. He, they're talking about the coming of Jesus, the Messiah, and the Antichrist. It's right there. Right from the get-go, uh, Genesis chapter 3, 15. You know what I mean? Mm. So that's, um, <laughs> it's right there, man. It's crazy, man. And uh, we got uh, we got so many shows coming up, guys. Uh, I just want to give you a preview of uh, so many shows we got coming up. We got, um... Let me get to the list here. <laughs> We're going to be doing the one on uh, the Kundalini and the New Age stuff, too, uh, because of uh, the Kundalini spirit, and it's uh, it's a New Age stuff, too, as well. Uh, but, but it's being used in churches today. It's uh, used in high levels of yoga and those kind of forms of uh, Buddhism and all that. But the Kundalini serpent spirit is a fake. We call it the counterfeit uh, Holy Spirit. That's being yeah. used by ministers and all that to so-called heal people. Or when they wave their hand, people go flying across the, the you know floor or whatever. Or they're barking like dogs. It's idiocracy. It really is. And um, we got the, the you know we like to touch on these uh, things out there because Ranker.com and all these publications come out right. They have these morons who write articles right, and you can clearly tell they don't know the Bible right. And like uh, we're gonna do a show soon. Come uh, hopefully uh, within the next few weeks. 
Um, another one, yeah, says uh, hell's not mentioned. It's only it's made up by the Catholic Church. It's not mentioned in the old text. I'm like, whoa. Uh, obviously, you guys have never read the Bible because it's most certainly in the Old Testament. It's in the Torah. It's an ancient text, okay? And it's also in the Book of Enoch, the ancient Book of Enoch. Hmm. And it's in the New Testament. It's not made up by the Catholic Church. You know what I mean? And, and it's ridiculous. It's got another name for it, but hell is well all through the Bible. You know what I mean? And they tell you this thing because they want you to think that, oh, God, and now this is what they'll say. Oh, God's not that merciful. Oh, I mean, he's merciful. He's not going to put somebody, so when you die, you're just dying. That's it. Nobody is in hell. It's like, well, you actually, you, you may have not read the Bible if you think that. You know what I mean? We like to debunk these things like the whole Lucifer's uh, Jesus thing. We did that last week. We destroyed that. And, um, but we got all kinds of shows coming up, man. And um, yeah, we got another giant show too, Giants in the News. And um, you know, coming up this week here, well, Friday, we got uh, Satan's New World Order and Spiritual Wickedness. We're gonna talk about some stuff, you know, new stuff too. A lot of Elon Musk, you know, Mark of the Beast type, Mark of the Beast type stuff. John Pound is from Nice TV. He's the host of the Midnight Ride. He's gonna be joining us. And uh, next Friday is uh, our annual Christmas show with David Carrico from FOJC Radio in the Midnight Ride as well. Uh, he's going to be joining us live as well next uh, next Friday. It's going to be awesome. So we got back to back. We're trying to get John Hall. So if guys, if you guys are in the chat room, guys, message John Hall. Say you got to come on the special. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Or we're going to send shocks. To, we're going to send uh, tornado shocks to his house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it'd be cool to have him on for sure. Tell him what, calling yeah. him out, that Kentuckian. <laughs> yeah, calling you out, boy. <laughs> yeah, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's coming up Friday, guys. Uh, uh, Satan's World Order and Special Wickedness. So that's going to be pretty cool. And if guys like the show, we, we got a PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App. Uh, all the links are in the description and also the. Um, the Kofi site that's in uh, the chat room there. And the best thing you can do is like. Uh, Subscribe. So, guys, I want to do uh, this right here. So, I'm going to put the link in the chat room. So, if we could take just two minutes to do this, right? We're trying to build Brian's channel up, Visual Disturbance. He's going to be putting tons of new content on. He just got a new program, uh, Streamlab, I think it is, to be able to do more videos like at an awesome rate, too. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this in the chat room. So, guys, if you take, just do this, right? You're not going to miss nothing, right? So, I put the link in the chat, right? Click on that link. Just click on it now and hit subscribe, right? Then hit the back button. You go back here. You know what I mean? So we'll give you about 30 seconds here. Just do that. Just click on the link right there. And I know it takes like 30 seconds of delay here, but just click on that link yeah. right there. We just put out visual disturbance. So uh, let me put that out again because um, I think I didn't space it between the lit. There you go. So that's Brian's channel right there, guys. So, uh, hit there right now. Uh, we'll wait. We're not going to say nothing. So go there, click on it, and just hit subscribe, then hit the back button. It comes right, right back here again. So we'll give you a minute to do that. So we got, um, I don't know how many people in the chat room, whatever the case, are watching. 94 people looks like is watching right now. So if you haven't subscribed to Brian's channel, please do so because we're trying to build this channel up because uh, we need a lot of channels. we got a backup channel for this channel too. Uh, because you never know when YouTube's going to shut us down. They shut our main channel down. We lost 20,000 subscribers. Go on, just like that. You know what I mean? So we got to mm -hmm. have uh, two or three steps ahead of the enemy. Plain and simple. And that's his channel, guys. Visual Disturbance. So please subscribe to that if you haven't. And guys, don't forget, um, subscribe to nystv.org if you haven't. And you get a free subscription on me for 30 days. No obligation. Dan demands a promo code. All the... Instructions are in the description, so pretty cool stuff, man. So, yeah, I think it's been a cool show. Yeah, blessed to be here for sure. Yeah. And don't worry, guys, we'll take your phone calls Friday. So uh, we were gonna do phone calls tonight, but it's running a little late, and I gotta be in work for eleven. So, <laughs> so yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll take your phone calls Fridays. But guys, please uh, go subscribe there. Well, we appreciate I appreciate anybody that comes to the channel to yeah. subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me for real. It really does. So I'm going to try to do some more interesting things, try some new things of um, trying to branch out and do multi-streaming, you know, like multi-streaming on different platforms at the exact same time. I'm going to try to integrate that into my channel so we could, do you, have a you know. Oh, uh-uh. No, I do not. That is a good question, but I do not. Oh, all right. I guess I need to then, don't I? <laughs> 
like that Bill O'Connell. I, I pity the fool that doesn't subscribe. <laughs> oh, is that what he said? Yeah. Oh, he said bless Mr. him. T, the milkman, to your house. If you don't subscribe, Brian's going to come to your house with the milk truck and oh, spray no. you with the milk Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can't drive, but yeah. yeah I'll get somebody else to drive for me. We'll pull yeah, We get to go up. with the diapers to drive. The- <laughs> oh, no, don't go there, Dan. Anyway. <laughs> The girl is oh. on the wheel. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. You're just now tuning the broadcast. <laughs> Welcome to Spiritual Warfare Wednesday. We're getting ready to turn this show off because <laughs> we're getting ready to go <laughs> off the Richter scale here and not yeah. gonna be able to come back from the rabbit hole <laughs> after we start talking about these controversial topics about my um, insane stories, but they was hundred percent factual information, but we're not gonna talk about it on air. <laughs> oh man, it was funny. I got a Rumble channel, guys. So, um, all the, you know, I got all my channels in the chat room too. So, if you go to truthradioshow.com, has the links to everything. So, and also, guys, please remember that because we never know what YouTube's gonna do. So, one day this uh, channel, they they could just shut it off just like that. You know what I mean? And um, so, we'll always go to truthradioshow.com. We'll have the link, exact link where we're broadcasting from and what we're gonna be talking about and everything else. So. Uh, I'll be right there on the website, so just, you know, you'll never miss the show if you go to truthradioshow.com. We always have the exact link where we're broadcasting from and the information as well. Because we got a backup YouTube channel, we got a Rumble channel, and a Bright Town channel, and so we're just trying to expand out everywhere, you know, so. And you want, uh, got anything else to talk about before you take off? I believe that's it, Diane. Because yeah. I don't, I want to kind of hold everything for the Spiritual Warfare Friday show. Yeah. And we can, uh. That would be really neat to add all that to the show on Friday. But this has been a really good broadcast. And yeah. I pray everybody has a lovely day and a, a really good rest of the week until we see everybody on Friday. And thanks yeah. for the love and support. We, Me and me and Dan really do appreciate it. And I appreciate it, too, going to my channel. And thank you, Dan, for uh, promoting my channel, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. And uh, Melt said uh, she likes the sound effects when you tell stories. I'm the same way, man. Like... Uh, <laughs> Like me and my uncle talk, right? And uh, I remember my ex-wife at the time. She goes, could you guys ever talk without making sound effects? Because <laughs> we'll have conversations. <laughs> and my uncle's like, we slammed into this thing. Went, bam! You know, making all these sound effects, you know? And uh, that's just how we talk, man. And I think Brian somehow yeah. related to me somehow. It's got to be somewhere in... Uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't know everybody there. enjoyed that. I didn't know everybody enjoyed the sound effects. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and... Um, Go check out. Uh, uh, we haven't got a link up yet, but go check out uh, this this Sunday coming. If everything goes goes well and the Lord allows it, we're gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be doing another uh, another FOJC Radio Sunday Night Live show, and we'll talk more about it on uh, Friday night. I should have more information on it, but as far as link, hopefully I'll have a link by then. But I think I, I can't get a link until Saturday, but. We'll be on there. It's going to be at nine. I think it's nine o'clock my time. So nine Eastern, uh, Eastern time, 9 PM. I'll be on FOJC radio, um, Sunday night live. So that's going to be really interesting. That one's going to be a real good show. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Absolutely. And guys, I got the link for the show Friday. So it's on my channel anyway, but if you go there, it's spiritual warfare Friday show link. So if you want to go there, hit, the notification bell or whatever the case uh even though youtube doesn't most of the time notify you anyway i don't know why they do that uh but yeah uh, that's the link for the show so all right guys um but yeah like we should close in prayer yeah absolutely so heavenly father we come before you when you ask you yeshua jesus that you can forgive us our sins and our trespasses and Heavenly Father, we ask you that all the information we told today, not to confuse people, not to get them afraid, but to wake them up and to let them know that you're in charge and these things must come to pass before you return. And, you know, the bad stuff has to happen, like you say, before, you know, the eternity with you, Lord. So we ask you to help Mary Thollinger here uh, in the chat room. I don't know if she's still there, but um, we ask you to plant the seed in her, Lord, and let the Holy Spirit work through her. And uh, we also ask you to help everybody here, just uh, any health afflictions going on, any spiritual problems that they're dealing with, we ask you to help them, and uh, myself and Brian as well, and our families. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Yeah, and um, thanks to everybody that um, supported us tonight and, and donated. We, we're truly blessed. Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, so. all right, guys. That being said, uh, we'll see you Friday, uh, eleven. P- I'm sorry, it's going to be eleven p.m. Uh, we usually do ten p.m., but we got stuff new. Uh, I, I'm a wrestler, so I'm wrestling Friday, early Friday night. So by the time we get back here, you know what I mean. So, uh, eleven p.m. Eastern, and uh, we're here. <laughs> Truthradioshow.com. The link will be also. So and I did post in the chat room too. So, God bless, Shalom, and you are the resistance. Love you all.